on the final day of March, the eve of April Fool's Day, Bellator MMA is in fooling around, bringing you a fantastic 15-fight card at the Pachanga Summit here at Pachanga Resort Casino in Temecula, a 90-minute drive from Los Angeles. In addition to a plethora of powdered keg prelims, Bellator 293 features a five-fight main card culminating with a heavyweight tilt between proven finishers Marcelo Gome and Daniel James. Both of them have won four straight fights and both are unbeaten under the Bellator banner. And in a matchup to determine the number one contender for the Bellator Women's Featherweight Championship, Katz and Gano collides with Leah McCourt. Former Bellator middleweight title challenger John Salter tries to stop the surging Maple Leaf mullet. Aaron Jeffrey, who is 2-0 with two KOs inside the Bellator MMA cage. Archie Colgan clashes with Justin Montalvo in a matchup of undefeated lightweight prospects. And Sullivan Cauley searches for his Bellator record six straight first round knockout to begin his pro career against the 6-1 Luke Trainer in light heavyweight action. Main card gets underway at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. Along with Big John McCarthy, I'm Moro Ranallo. We'll check in with Josh Thompson throughout the night, but we are popping the cork on the prelims with a 115-pound encounter between the 1-0 Maria Henderson and Mackenzie Stiller, who is making her professional debut. Our tale of the tape for this strawweight matchup, you can take a look very young. For Mackenzie Stiller, just 23 years of age, 30 years from Rhea, everything else is almost the same. With the official introductions, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to all of those joining us on the East Coast and good late afternoon to those with us here live in Southern California as we get set now here at Pachanga Resort and Casino to kick off the prelims here at Bellator 293 and we'll do it with three five minute rounds in the strong weight division. Introducing first the blue corner at five foot two, weighing in 115.4 pounds, making her professional debut. She fights out of Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, Mackenzie McJudo Stiller. And across the cage, her adversary out of the red corner at five foot one, weighing in the same at 115.4 pounds as a professional. She's now one and oh, she fights out of Phoenix, Arizona, presenting Maria Mouse Henderson. And your referee in charge, Jonathan Romero. Maria Henderson, the wife of the recently retired lightweight great Benson Henderson, taking the baton for the Henderson family. Mackenzie Stiller making her pro debut, but plenty of experience nationally and internationally when it comes to judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and wrestling. Her wrestling and judo are outstanding. She has got an incredible ability from Kezuka Tommy to get different types of arm locks. So Marie's gonna have to be very careful with that on the ground. Anderson fighting from the southpaw stance gets countered nicely by the right hand from Stiller. Anderson walking straight forward, trying to throw in combinations and just misses with that left hand down the middle. Some nice counters there by Stiller though. She's looking and watching when Maria comes in, setting her feet and throwing her hands back. That's exactly what you want to do. Don't give her that freedom of range. Nice left down the middle, followed by the right hook, and now Henderson coming forward. Good escape by Mackenzie Stiller. Her road debut, having the presence of mind to circle away to her left, reset in the center of the cage. Yeah, you said it exactly right. That circling is big. You don't want to go straight back. You want to circle off to make your opponent's angle change. Beautiful body kick from the southpaw, Henderson. Nice counter right as Henderson was taken off balance. Henderson attacking the leg, and she does have a submission win and looking for the heel hook. She's looking for it right now. Got to be very careful in this position. You get stacked up, you can take a lot of damage. And first sign of adversity for Mackenzie Stiller, and she's handling it very well, dropping ground and pound. Some hammer fists on Henderson. Calm under pressure as Henderson was looking for the heel hook. She's looking for it, you gotta be so careful because you start to get stacked up, which is exactly what Mackenzie Stiller did. 
She closed that space. Your head is open. You can be hit. So effective ground and pound from Stiller. Hammer fist on Henderson, who continues to try to look for the submission while leaving her face exposed. You know, taking a lot of shots right there, but showing how tough she is. Maria still in this, holding on to that one arm as giving up her back, though. Stiller puts in one hook, looking for the other one. And Mackenzie Stiller now in top position. Full mouth now giving up her back as Henderson. Still plenty of time left in the first round. Henderson not reacting well right now. You can't just hide. You gotta think about what you need to do to get yourself up. That's better. Right there, grab her body, break her posture down. Brutal pressure by Stiller. Henderson was looking for the backdoor escape, but this is beautiful control from the back by Stiller, raining down the shots, looking for the ground and pound finish, and perhaps trying to open up Henderson for a potential rear naked choke. Yeah, she's looking for it, but she's very good with the arm bar. She has to, Maria has to be careful about extending that arm out. She's turning and just beautiful job by McKenzie to just continue to float on top. This is Mackenzie Stiller's professional debut, 23 years of age, and Sean, she looks like the real deal thus far in the way that she has handled Maria Henderson, who's been training in jiu-jitsu since she was 17, met her husband, Benson, got that arm, training now, Stiller looking for the arm bar, fully extended. Nice job of rolling through, but it's still there. She just tapped that. There was the tap, a gutsy effort by Maria Henderson, but Mamma Mia, welcome to Bellator MMA. Mackenzie Stiller with a magnificent professional debut. Uh, you can't ask for anything more, and, you know, and talking with her coaches and watching her tape. This girl, I saw she's good. She just flows through the fight. And obviously, you know, coming off of all amateur wins, but it was the way she was doing it. And man, she just kept it going in her pro debut. Take a look at that with it. You see that entwinement of the leg by Maria Henderson, which is really nice. But as soon as she gets this point where you see McKenzie come up, now it's time to release that because it's not gonna work for you. And you start taking shots. She tried to adjust throughout it but Mackenzie Stiller was all over her and finally went to the straight arm lock. You saw a lot of hyperextension there. You saw Maria trying to pull herself out, but ends up belly down on that. It doesn't help. She tries to jump back over too much. There's your tap. Mackenzie Stiller fighting out of Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, representing Omega Training Center in Huntley, Illinois, and her team, One Touch Fight Team, trainers Brett Brendel and Vince DeChico, smiles ears to ears after what they have just witnessed. Mackenzie Stiller with a scintillating pro debut. Let's make it official with MCW. Ladies and gentlemen, here in the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. Three minutes, 17 seconds into round number one. The tap by way of an arm bar. She'll begin as an undefeated professional, Mackenzie Mac Judo Stiller. Mackenzie Stiller now 1-0. and oh. Maria Henderson falls to 1-1, one and one, but again, <laughs> plenty of room for improvement. Henderson, just 30 years of age, and hats off to her. Inspiring mothers everywhere, raising four kids now, focusing on her professional MMA career, but let's not bury the lead. The night belongs to Mackenzie Stiller and a memorable professional debut. All right, someone is gonna be doing the real heavy lifting throughout the night, and he'll start by talking about our heavyweight main event, but first, I wanna get your reaction to what you just witnessed, Mr. Josh Thompson. Wow, what a performance. Making your pro debut just like that great transition of the arm bars, absolutely amazing. But look, we're gonna go from the ladies to the heavyweights into the main event. Right now, I gotta talk about most Marcelo Goleman, he, what he looks like and his size. This is the first time he's come in this heavy. And so when we were talking with him this week, he was actually said, I feel comfortable, I feel good at this weight, I feel fast. But man, when I look at Daniel James, He's put on another 15 pounds since weigh-ins, and when you see them square up against each other in the center of that cage, there you go, right there. These two fighters, they may not look like they're much different, but Daniel James only about probably two inches taller, but the weight will be a factor, even though Marcelo Gomb came in a little bit heavier. But he says the speed will be to his advantage, and Daniel James looking to get the knockout as fast as he possibly can. I'm looking forward to this in fireworks. Back down to you, Marl. All right, JT, yeah, lots of potential for Fistic Fireworks coming up later tonight. 
here at Pachanga Summit at Pachanga Resort Casino. And you look at Bellator 293 coming your way at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. And John, yeah, the heavyweights, they always take the headlines. They're in the headline attraction. And of course, for Gom and James, both proven finishers. But you got Katzengano and Liam McCourt, who will be vying to become the number one contender for the Women's Featherweight Championship. How about John Salter, Aaron Jeffrey? Careers going in opposite directions, but by by far, John Salter, former Bellator middleweight title challenger, represents the toughest test of the surging Aaron Jeffries career. And John, I want to get your thoughts on Archie Colgan, Justin Montavo. It speaks to the depth of the Bellator MMA roster where these two undefeated lightweights are looking to really test themselves early. Yeah, and right now we're doing the World Grand Prix in the lightweight division so you can see how stacked that division is based upon both these guys undefeated and unbelievably skilled. Justin Montalvo goes to the body beautifully. Archie Colgan, good stand-up, fantastic wrestling. And what a way to get things started with Sullivan Cully and Luke Trainer, two proven finishers. Great card coming your way. Main card of Bellator 293, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. Let's go to the tail of the tape for our next preliminary encounter. It'll be fought in the Bantamweight division. Bryce Meredith undefeated against Brandon Carrillo, who was also unbeaten. Bryce Meredith coming off an incredible wrestling career 3 and 0 against Brandon Creo who believes that he can make his record 3 and 0 with this win. Here's Michael C Williams. And now from here in Temecula, California, we go to 3 5 minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Introducing first the blue corner at 5 foot 7 weighing in 135.4 pounds undefeated early on. He stands at 2 and 0. Let's go! From Tijuana, Mexico, he oh, fights out of San Diego, oh, California, presenting Brandon Lee Carrillo. Oh, and across the cage is adversary out of the red corner. At 5 foot 9, weighing in 135.6 pounds, undefeated as well. He brings three wins without a loss by way of Cheyenne, Wyoming. He fights out of Phoenix, Arizona. Bryce Misfit Meredith. And your referee in charge, Frank Trigg. <laughs> I was going to jump right in front of your legs. <laughs> Bryce Meredith, standout wrestler at the University of Wyoming. Brandon Carrillo, he's got some pop in his punches. Ready? Ready? Fight! Will somebody's O go? We're about to find out. Three five-minute rounds in the 135-pound division. And Meredith taking command of the center of the cage, putting early pressure on Carrillo, who's coming back, missing with a sweeping left hook, and there's a push kick to the midsection of Meredith. So no feeling out process with these two bantamweights with something to prove. Oh, well, Brandon Carrillo believes that he has the power to put Meredith out, and he does, but he needs to connect. And the real question is, when is Meredith going to shoot? And because he, his wrestling is so good. And he used his striking to facilitate the takedown, changing levels. Look at a nice squeeze on the legs, already taking the back. In the opening minute, Rice Meredith already putting Brandon Carrillo in a dire position, has the hook in, continues to work from the back, John striking. Yeah, well, he has a lot of time to work with here from this position, and right now, Brandon's not doing the things to get himself out. There you go, start to work it. Now he's looking towards the Sulu F stretch. Changed it up. Brandon needs to keep on wiggling, trying to shake him off the top. He's gotten a little bit high there. Meredith 3-0 with three finishes, including a rear naked choke in his last fight against Nathan Plott. Making his Bellator MMA debut, and we just saw what Mackenzie Stiller did in her fight. First fight as a pro under the Bellator banner, and Bryce Meredith putting it on Brandon Carrillo early. Carrillo's doing a good job and just taking his time, trying to shake him off a little bit here. He's got it where he's past there. He's just got to keep on shaking out a little bit, and he's in the top position. Very nicely done. And Carrillo trains with the likes of Jeremy Stevens, Dominic Cruz, Barrett Yoshida in nearby San Diego, California. Yeah, this, Meredith tenacious trying to get him back to the canvas. And this is what Meredith has. He has that 
just incredible wrestling background. We're talking about an NC2A you know, finalist twice. We're talking about a guy looking to be on the Olympic team. He's been up against the very best, and so he is tenacious when it comes to he does not settle. John Crouch out of the MMA lab is very high on Bryce Meredith right now. And you know Bryce Meredith is extra fired up after seeing one of his teammates, Maria Henderson, lose in her last fight. Of course, Benson and Maria Henderson, pivotal people at the MMA lab where Bryce Meredith has honed his skills. Yeah, and you know, obviously they're doing a good job with him because right now, you know, he's had one moment where he ended up underneath. That was for about a second and a half, and he was already up back on top. You would never guess by this start that we're talking about a guy who says he feels like he's a coward, that he's never working hard enough, that he always puts that extra pressure on himself, John, and, and yet here he is at the age of 27 under the bright lights of Bellator MMA and in control of Brandon Carrillo. Very nice movement right there. You saw how quickly he goes right to the neck, follows and keeps his hips square with Brandon Carrillo. That's what's gonna keep you in place with those hooks in. He told us he feels he can fight, end this fight anywhere and everywhere. There's Meredith's coaches from the MMA lab. Seeing every one of those punches on coming cue. up underneath the arm. He attacks the neck on cue. All the punches you're seeing when he's throwing, a lot of them coming up under the arm. That's all smart technique. It's hard to see. It's the shots that you don't see that end up hurting you. There he goes to the rear naked and just let go of it that fast. Seeking his second consecutive RNC as we come up on the final minute of the first round, a round that has been dominated positionally and otherwise by Bryce Meredith. Under a minute remaining, a lot of height surrounding Bryce Meredith and the tools and the potential that he would bring to Bellator MMA and showcasing. More of the hype is real. Yes. Just take Public a look. Enemy told us not to believe the hype. Although, <laughs> hey, Brandon Carrillo with just over 30 seconds left nice trying to survive the round. Nice gift wrap by Meredith there. Takes the arms, looks towards it. Made a mistake there, but very nice again. He's so quick and so good with well his balance. Hands. His hips are very heavy. He pushes exactly like he's supposed to. And hips don't lie. I see <laughs> 15 seconds left in the opening five minutes. Great back control by Bryce Meredith. Continues to be busy peppering a valiant Carrillo with plenty of ground and pound. Carrillo not capitulating, but he was dominated in the first five. Enough to give it a 10-8. It is right. I, I want you to think about this. How much offense did you see out of Brandon Carrillo? Well, according to our stats, John, great question. 45 of 56 for Meredith, 4 of 17 for Carrillo in total strikes and, landed and thrown. Well, and, and those 17, a lot was just you know looking and, towards gaining range uh, and air. Yeah, and two for two in the takedown department, exactly. which led to the control. Let's listen in. Now he's going to come out hard. That right hand is going to be flinging. And he's looking for the uppercut when you shoot. So we need to pull him and get it back on the ground. Yeah. Good job drawing him out, man. Great eyes in there. You got the ice on his back? Sure. One more deep breath for me. That's great. Hey, if you get him on the ground, look, they're punching those little transitions, hey, right? He's warm, he's, but he's going to have one minute of good energy. You, got you hear me? Ten seconds, ten seconds. Go, mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Where's the mouthpiece? Where's his mouthpiece? Mouthpiece. Oh, you got it? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Carrillo looking to bounce back in the second round after being Ready? taken down Ready? and mauled by Bryce Meredith, whose corner warned him that Korea would have about 60 seconds of good energy, of course. Well, he just tasted that one, two from Meredith. They did well. Very clean. And watching Carrillo in his two professional fights, look, he was the hammer in those fights. And so you just saw that position when we talked. He was the nail. But you know what? He fought his way through the entire time, never gave up, showed that he his game in this fight. So you cannot count him out. Stymie with that dominant round. Trying to stymie the takedown, but the perseverance of Bryce Meredith gets the takedown. And now along the fence, he's inside control. Could go to a ball. And blue. right to full mount. And so 
Carrillo spent the majority of the first round carrying Meredith on his back, and now here again has his back, John, early in the second. Yeah, it's a, almost at the exact same moment from the first round. There's four minutes left in this round, and you're going to see Bryce Meredith not not doing the same things he did before. I don't think you're going to see him getting high anymore. He's just going to ride this and look for the moment where he can use strikes to set up that rear naked choke. And for Carrillo, it's all about trying to gain wrist control here and trying to break the, the potential attack of an RNC. Yeah, and, you know, it's, a, it's about slowing things down. Yep, and he's Don't able to, to get back to his feet. So again, Brandon Carrillo, resilient, and now marching forward, throwing the right hand, a minute and a half gone in the middle round. Changing levels, Meredith gets the takedown right into half guard. A little labored by Brandon Curry. You can tell that all of this activity is starting to wear on him. He's taking a lot of damage. That does wear you out. It takes your gas. It's 50 to 8 Here in comes. terms of total strikes landed. Arm triangle choke attempt by Meredith. He needs to get off the side. Wing you want, you want, he's got to drop those hips down. Yes, he does. Right now, in that position, yeah, you can squeeze, but if you drop the hips and create the angle, it's going to make that squeeze a lot tighter, and it's a lot easier. There go the hips. He started to finally do it. Now you're going to end up probably getting the tap. Or he might take a nap. He's putting all kinds of pressure, but Carrillo, the gutsy. Korea refusing to give up, refusing to surrender as the squeeze becomes tighter and tighter. Should be Meredith just starts to create the angle, bring his hips away from the body. Put your knee against the hip area of Brandon Carrillo, creating more of an angle. It's, it makes the squeeze so much tighter. Carrillo fighting out of San Diego by way of Tijuana, Mexico, proving to be Tijuana toughest. Meredith forced to release the grip, but still in control. Mouthpiece went out. And again, Meredith looking for the rear. Going palm to palm. Smart. Two minutes left in the second. Carrillo rolling, desperately trying to survive. Nice job by Brandon Carrillo. That's tight, though. So, Bryce Meredith is now 4-0 with four finishes, including his second consecutive submission. John, 27 years of age and already proving to be as well-rounded as they come. Well, what he's really showing you is composure. Take a look at what happens here. Here comes when he just gets the takedown really easy. Goes right into side control. When he tries for this arm triangle here, a couple mistakes in the beginning. He tried to settle his hips down. Never got the right angle to make it really to where there was no choice for his opponent. But then when he went to the rear naked choke, you saw he tried to lock it in, then went back to palm to palm. Much more difficult for him to break the hands apart at that point. Beautiful job and a ton of composure and a whole lot coming forward from Bryce Meredith. And Brandon Carrillo tastes defeat for the first time, but he didn't make it easy. For oh, Brandon. no, you got you got to really give it up for Brandon Carrillo. He, he fought his butt off in there. A lot of it was not working for him, never gave up, kept coming. Very tough individual. But the MMA lab has produced another stud hit, Bryce Meredith, who, again, a three-time All-American, two-time NCAA championship finalist, Big 12 Conference champion at University of Wyoming, has made the seamless transition to MMA, began his career with two TKOs, and now back-to-back -back rear naked chokes, including in his first fight under the bright lights of Bellator MMA. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end. The tap by way of a rear naked choke. Official time, three minutes, 11 seconds. Round number two by submission. He's still undefeated. Rise, Miss He's known as the misfit, but uh, he seems to be a perfect fit for the sport of mixed martial arts. Welcome to Bellator MMA's Bantamweight division, Bryce Meredith, now a perfect 4-0, all four coming before the final bell. 
And of course, Meredith, a standout wrestler, as we welcome back Josh Thompson, Josh Katzengano in the co-feature coming up later tonight. She's known for her grappling. She takes on Leah McCourt to determine the number one contender for the Women's Featherweight Championship. I mean, Katzengano's resume speaks for itself, but Leah McCourt, she's on the rise. Well, I gotta give a little, a little love to Bryce Meredith real quick, wrestling out of the University of Wyoming, standout wrestler there, runner-up two times there for the national championship. Fantastic addition to the 135-pound division for Bellator. I'm excited to see where he goes. That is the most stacked division in the sport right now of MMA, and I cannot wait to see what happens for him. But when we get to Katzengano in the co-main event with Liam McCourt, when I look at the two of them matched up, you've got almost like a tradition of, say, the wrestler versus the striker. But when I look at Liam McCourt, she's got judo, she's got great submissions, but she's really been evolving her game on the feet and talking to her this week. She's made it very obvious that she plans to stand, trying to sprawl and brawl, keep this fight on the feet. And Kat is going to get back to the well. She's going to do what she does very well. She's going to wrestle, she's going to grind, and she's going to bring that wrestler and grind back into this fight. And this is going to be one heck of a co-main event. Morrow, back down to you, bud. All right, thank you very much, JT, as we get set for action now at a contract weight of 120 pounds. We will be watching Randy Field, who is three and one, including one and one in the Bellator cage. And she will take on Ashley Smashley Cummins, who is seven and six overall, including one and oh here in Bellator MMA. She returns to Bellator. And of course, coming out of retirement, she was a former St. Louis police officer. She now teaches defensive tactics at the San Diego Police Academy. I was there April 28th, 2012, when Invicta FC began all-female promotion. Hats off to Shannon Knapp and Tal. Ashley Cummins was, was on that card, and she was victorious. And so she's been around a long time, but she takes on Randy Field, who wants to make some noise here in Bellator. Yeah, and what we're looking at, this is normally a straw weight fight, but this was at a contract weight of 120 pounds. Pounds. Ashley Cummins was the one that, that was moved for it. Look, she came in way under 119.2, made it easy. Here's Michael C. Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here at Bellator 293, the prelims go now to a contract weight fight at 120 pounds. We are set for three five minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At five foot two, weighing in 119.2 pounds. Her professional record seven and six by way of St. Louis. She fights out of San Diego, California. Ashley Smashley Cummins. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot three, weighing in 120 pounds even. As a professional, three victories, just one defeat out of Windsor, Ontario, Canada, the Rose City Phoenix, Randy Field. And the referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Randy Field coming off a second round rear naked choke submission at Bellator 279 in April of last year against Mariah Miller. Ashley Cummins returning to Bellator since beating Nicole Let's Smith run, in June ready? of 2016 at Bellator 157 with the rarely seen knee on neck choke, John McCarthy. <laughs> Trying to control the center of the cage. Both have tested the waters in the stand-up department early. Nice right hook to the body by Fields. Fields is someone you're gonna. She's gonna want to keep this fight on her feet as much as possible because she's comfortable. And you'll notice she's got very nice, fluid footwork. Ashley Cummins, very good on the ground. She's a little bit more plodding with her footwork. She's a little bit flat-footed, but she's been in so many fights and is so tough. 
she's just someone, you know, she just takes everyone, either the distance or she gets that win. So a lot of experience. Field bounced back with a victory after tasting defeat for the first time against Sumiko Inaba at Bellator 268 last October, or make that October of 2021, in fact. And Inaba, of course, on a meteoric rise. And for Ashley Cummins, while well, she's trying to get back on track, having lost her two fights, but again, coming out of retirement as well. She last fought in September of 2020 in Invicta, John. Yeah, that, and that's something when you're looking, it's especially in the lighter divisions, it's not easy to come back because speed is a big element when you're talking about these ladies, they're fast. When you're looking at Randy Fields right now, her hands are fast, and so you've got to make up things when you've not been in the cage. Things happen a lot faster when you get back in that real fight. Yeah, we saw a strawweight fight begin the prelim proceedings here tonight. Randy Field has been a vocal advocate of Bellator MMA establishing a 115 pound weight class. Again, this fight at 120 pounds contract weight. Yeah, nice jab from Cummins. It would be so nice to see. And like you said, we just watched Mackenzie Stillard put on an incredible performance against Maria Henderson. And here we go again. This is right in the same weight class, basically, straw weight. Just past the midway point of the opening round. Both of them continue to forage in the striking department. Field has opened up the early edge, although Cummins fighting down on the mouthpiece and trying to circle away, standing right in front of Field, giving away the physical advantages as she changes levels. Looks for the single and dumps Field on her back, but Field very calm working from this position, John. But this was exactly what Ashley Cummings was waiting for. She needed that moment where she could get this fight to the ground. Being in the top position, this is big for her. She's got a minute and 45 seconds to work with. Let's see what she can do. Two of Cummings' seven wins have come via submission. We talked about the neon neck choke and the last submission win, but it's now Field who's controlling her neck from the bottom position. Cummings pops out. Putting pressure on Field. Field doing a good job staying active off her back. Well, Field's been very active. She's landed. She's actually gone for a choke. Not, not real close to getting it, but landed a couple shots. And she's keeping Ashley Cummings from being able to move past the guard. And right now, Ashley Cummings hasn't done anything besides try to protect that position. Final 60 seconds of the opening round. Cummings. Looking to improve to eight and six and two and zero oh here in Bellator MMA. I love the guard work that I'm seeing out of Randy Fields. Notice the open guard. She's got the butterfly hook with the right side, foot on the hip. She brings it up to the top. She's been pushing on the arm. She's creating space that's keeping Ashley from being able to get out of this position and move. Now, now going to the Plata. Alma Plata there after delivering some hammer fists. Very nice job by Ashley to step over the head though. Cummings trying to Cummings needs stay to keep, on top. She needs to keep that left arm at the outside. She's got it on the inside. If she's wrapped around the outside, that would keep Ashley from being able to come around. Competitive opening frame between Randy Field and Ashley Cummins. How do you score it on your unofficial scorecard, BJM? You know, I know Ashley Cummings got the takedown, but let's be honest, what did she do with that takedown? For the most part, she took more shots. She didn't land a whole lot of shots, and if you look at the stand-up before, which was about three minutes of the round, Randy Fields had the better of it, so right now, I would have given Randy Fields that round to him. There is inaugural flyweight champion, Alima Leigh McFarlane, returning to her home in Hawaii next month as part of the back-to-back -back nights for Bellator MMA in Honolulu, April 21st and 22nd, and one of Cummins main training partners always great when you can pick the brain of someone as accomplished as a Lima Lane McFarland. She don't like that. She don't like that uppercut. Get that uppercut up in there. Get that mouthpiece. Cummins corner looking for the uppercut. Second round, buddy, ready. Oh. 
Are you ready? Fight. The bell, round and number two, they touch gloves. Field, moving forward, utilizing the jab. Cummins flashes the jab and launches the left. There's a right down the middle, and Cummins again looking for the single leg, a knee delivered by Field before they break. That was a nice knee. Had a lot of power on it. Field, seven years in judo. Loves to utilize kicks and knees. Putting together a nice combination there, John. A jab and a right hook to the body. That's the real difference you're seeing in their stand-up. You're seeing more with Ashley Cummings going towards focusing on the head. Randy Fields is utilizing the entire body. She's going up and down, throwing body shots, back to the head, utilizing kicks, just being showing a, a lot more diversity in her attack. And in doing so, showcasing her ever-evolving fight IQ as well. The 32-year-old fighting out of Windsor, Ontario, with uh, Main Street Boxing and Muay Thai, Central Combat Sports, Detroit Jiu-Jitsu, has a host of coaches helping her continue to realize her dreams. Started at the bottom, as she put it, in 2014, and here she is. In Bellator MMA, looking to move to two and one inside this cage against the veteran Cummins. Cummins ate that right hand right down the middle from Field. Nice left hook to the jaw by Field. Yeah, and that's the type of shot Randy Fields needs to continue to throw. She, that, she was committed on it. You could see the power behind it. And sometimes she's just throwing out, not really putting a whole lot on it. Every shot should have some type of bad intentions. And Field also investing in making the lead leg of Cummins immobile, making sure she doesn't circle as she attacks with calf kicks, low leg kicks. So as you mentioned, John, a very varied at offensive attack by Randy Field. Again, it's the diversity of it. You're seeing Ashley's really coming at this all like a boxer. She's utilizing her stand up with her hands, not doing a whole lot with the kicks and she's not attacking the body. Meanwhile, Field continues to chop away at the lead leg, and you're beginning to see a shift in the movement, or lack thereof, for Ashley Cummins. Exactly, you can see it. Immobilizing her. Look how flat-footed. And you can look at those kick stats right there. We're talking eight of 13 for Fields, zero of zero for Ashley Cummins. Right hand of the body by Field. Using angles to deliver her attack. There's a body kick by Cummins. But it's Field who's utilizing movement now. Cummins shifting to her right, but again, flat footed, able to escape that. Shot by Field. Two minutes left in the second round. That's a right hand over the top by Cummins that clip field. Cummins is trying to, she's trying to look for those counters. She's got to get a little more output, just a little bit more. Just start to just ratchet it up. In terms of the numbers, it has been competitive with Field holding a slight edge, but in terms of the eye-catching shots and the crisper cleaner combinations, it's Randy Field. And again, you saw that right hand of the body, left hook comes up top. There's a there you go. left hook right hand by Cummins. Jab by Cummins, and you mentioned earlier, trying to establish the stick, John, but it's not going to be enough against someone like Field. Yeah, she's just, you know, totally see what she's trying to do, and she's looking for those counters. Trying to get her head just a little bit off center line when she comes back with it. Jab intercepted that uppercut attempt by Cummins. Sharp jab and a nice jab to the body. Randy Field continues to show wrinkles and continues to grow in confidence and using the L walk. I mean, yep. you see the training and you see the evolution on display. As Randy Field has talked about it, she knows this is, I mean, for years, this is what you, you put in all the hours. You make those sacrifices, John, much easier and much harder, but there are easier ways to make a living, and she's chosen yeah. MMA because she feels it is her calling and her purpose. Well, there's a whole lot easier ways to make a living, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're going to do this, you've got to go about doing it the right way, and you can see Randy is. That jab, you know, she's utilizing a simple punch like the jab, but she's doing it the right way, and she's making that open up the body. She's overcome major surgery. And here tonight looking 
to ruin the comeback of Ashley Cummins. Randy Field looked good through 10 minutes. And she began to open up more down the stretch in that second half of the second round. Well, yeah. And, and give you, us your unofficial score, brother. I uh, right, you, you have to give that round to Randy Fields, no doubt about it. And you take a look at, just look at the output. You're seeing one start to increase a little bit, one starting to decrease. No, yeah, so just check it out. Combos yep, the straight punches. The, the boxing, she's, she's slowing down and she's standing yes. straight up. Those dividends will pay off now in the body. The dividends will pay off now. So take it, take round. Okay, I need you to dig fucking deep. I need you to go get it. She doesn't have an answer for your hands. She doesn't have an answer for your hands. Got it? She doesn't, give her in the fucking chest, give her in the stomach, and bring her upstairs. That uppercut, go to the opposite side, wherever you need to, to engage it. Off the jab, lateral, uppercut, left hook. Got me? Let's go. Let's get some punches up. You got to smash. You got to smash. Ash, give me this fucking round. They didn't pull any punches in terms of demanding a higher offensive output from Ashley Cummins. Meanwhile, for Randy Field, the instructions keep doing what you're doing, but continue to make that investment to the body. Here in the third and final round, Ashley Cummins, 1-0 in Bellator, 7-6 overall. Randy Field, 1-1 in Bellator, 3-1 overall. So very much still in the blossoming stages of her career. Cummins looking to change levels, stymied and nailed with some knees and punches from Field. And you could see just in that level change, the way she did it, she's getting tired. And you know, you start to, you know, a little sloppier in the shots, a little bit, you know, the change of levels just a little bit slower and not as crisp. And that, you gotta figure she took this fight only on a week's notice or so, and it's showing. And you can't blame her, but this is what happens. You know, it's tough when you're getting into this third round and you're tired and your arms are heavy. And it's been over three years since you were last in active competition. Exactly. But for Randy Field, we are seeing the Effective striking strategy composed. There's Cummins lands a nice calf kick to the lead leg up. Field, but Field putting together the nothing basic, but textbook one, two, punctuating with the kick, diversifying its its textbook stuff and effective stuff. And effective because right now, if you're looking at this third round, look at what she's doing. She's throwing straight punches. Straight punches are gonna get there faster. It just makes her look faster. Sharp jab by Field. Doesn't follow up with the right. Fields corner imploring her to keep backing Cummins up. Field told us her greatest strengths are her heart, her grit, her never quit attitude, and the fact that she is aggressive in the cage, but it's calculated aggression tonight. It's, it's utilizing her tank responsibly. And right there, you saw that was intelligent fighting. She saw. You know what, I can close the space. Ah, she's gonna try to get into me. Let me push off, let me reestablish the center. Very smart, she's in control of this fight right now. Just her fifth professional fight. Nice body kick to Cummins by Field. Jab, another jab and misses with the uppercut. Recorder would love her to start sitting down more on these punches, bite down on the mouth piece with 240 left in the fight. And she needs to start getting past that one-two. She's throwing a lot of one-twos. Keep your feet moving forward. If you're going after with shots, one-two, bring the three-four. Those are the ones that are gonna land with more power. Randy Field overcame a near fatal accident in her youth. We talked about her overcoming surgery and it just speaks to the testament of all the athletes that step inside the cage, the Bellator MMA cage and what it takes to have your dreams come true and Cummins now able to secure the takedown. But like we saw the first time around, it's Field that is on the attack from the bottom. Right now Field is attacking, we see what Ashley Cummins can do here. She does not have anything with an armbar there, but she's the one opening up with shots. Amethyst from the bottom, pushing Cummins away and trying the up kick. Cummins now putting the pressure on her, trying to enter the guard. And it's so hard if, kick. You, if you're Ashley Cummins right now, if you're tired, 
And so just to all this activity and you're thinking, just give me a second. And Field gets to her feet. Of course, that up kick to delivers becomes a bigger in, in women's MMA as we've seen. Of course, the, the creativity, the evolution in there. Three punch combination by Field. But hey, she got stunned momentarily. That right uppercut from Cummins. But you saw when that third punch comes, the entire, the hands were down because she was going to the body. Now she's dropping it. Here comes a third punch over the top. It lands clean. Final day of March. Field marching forward consistently, initiating the attack inside low kick, but taking deep breaths now as well. Randy Field with quite the pace. She's thrown 253 strikes compared to 206 for Cummins. Big advantage for Field, but she continues to take deep breaths and continues to come forward, putting the pressure on Cummins, continuing to go to the body as well. Cummins still looking for that counter, trying to get herself that one shot that she's going to start to change this fight with. Right hand to the body by Field. 20 seconds left. Contract weight of 120 pounds. Randy Field, one of the fighters clamoring for a 115-pound division in Bellator, but looking to spoil the return to competitive action for Ashley Cummins. And from where we sit, appears to have done so as she embraces Ashley Cummins. But Randy Field, for 15 minutes, put on uh, her... Put, put her game plan in motion and was highly effective. Yeah, she did exactly what she was supposed to do. Go out there, try to keep the feet, you know, the fight on the feet for as long as possible. Use that jab. Her corner, very impressed, calling it a beautiful job, Almost That was it, that was it. Good job, man. Good job, that was awesome. You're gonna expect to hear that from your corner, but but your corner will judge the fight. <laughs> Experienced fighter. Hands up. Hands Experienced up. fighter. That's right. I mean, she did take out a fighter who started her career in 2011, who has been in there with the likes of Jin Frey, Alessia Zapatella, Nicole Smith, Alexa Grosso, who went to a decision with Alexa Grosso. Yes, in a big I called that fight back in 2014. So, uh, Ashley Cummins has been around the MMA block at 35, went the distance now with 32-year-old Randy Field, who, again, wants to continue to, to rise up here in Bellator MMA. And after 15 minutes, we await the official verdict. And, of course, mad respect to Ashley Cummins. For what she's done as a law enforcement officer and what she continues to do now teaching martial arts at the San Diego Police Academy. Let's make, let's find out who was victorious. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges. Your first at cage side, Salim Hanif, who scores the fight 30 27, while judges Chris Lieben and Mark Davidson both see it the same 29 to 28. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, the Rose City Phoenix, Randy Field. Rose City Phoenix rises to another victory. She is now four and one going the distance against the veteran Ashley Cummins. She's two and one in Bellator and the celebration begins in this Canadian fighter's corner putting in the work and getting the right result here at Bellator 293 at Pachanga Summit in Temecula, California. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today.
Minotaur Cage has landed. Tonight on Showtime. Bellator 293, Pachango Resort Casino, Temecula, California. Intriguing matchup at lightweight. Lance Gibson Jr., second generation fighter, undefeated against the 8 and 2 Vladimir Tokov, whose brother Anatoly recently vied for the middleweight championship. Yes, he did. You can take a look. Everything is basically the same, but 7 and 0 for Lance Gibson. He's had some moments where he's had some some adversarial moments in the cage but man he's always come shining through it and vladimir tokov so good at eight and two here's michael c williams the prelims tonight here bellator 293 continue as we go three five minute rounds in the lightweight division introducing first the blue corner at five foot ten weighing in 155.2 pounds his professional record eight wins only two losses ladies and gentlemen presenting Vladimir Tokov and across the cage his adversary out of the red corner at five foot ten weighing in 156 pounds even as a professional he comes in tonight undefeated seven victories no defeats introducing fear Lance Gibson Jr. And the referee in charge, Rafael Davis. Lance Gibson Jr.'s five fight Bellator Let's winning go. streak and lightweight tied with champion Usman Magomedov for the longest active streak in the division. Vladimir Tokov, his previous five fights have gone Buddy, to ready? the judges. Buddy, you ready? Here we go. Power on fight. Something's got to give as Gibson and Tokov touch go. Gloves, Gibson, Lance Gibson Sr., of course, an MMA pioneer and training in his native Port Moody, British Columbia, Canada, but also spending time at the Cejudo Gym, fight ready in Scottsdale, Arizona. Meanwhile, Tokov, he's a member of Fedor team out of Stari Oskol, Russia. F look, Fedor's team and everybody on it, when you're looking at Vladimir Tokov, he's just good in all elements. He takes his time, he's composed. It's the athleticism of Lance Gibson Jr. that he's gonna have a hard time with based upon Gibson is very strong, very fast. And look, he grew up in this sport. His dad was a heck of a fight. Yeah, he started training at the age of two, my friend. <laughs> two years old, already learning martial arts. Superman punch, the right hand delivered for Tokov and scored. But with Gibson, a wrestler at ASU, of course, the same school. Nice Good. left hand from Gibson. The same school from Ryan. Oh! What a shot by Tokov! Mamma mia, just like Boy, that was fast and that was nasty. Gibson had a beautiful job when they came together, but that chin was out there and Tokov took it. Watch with how he frames out, lands a nice elbow, that shot over the top, kind of gets him a little bit. Watch this. That the jab left hand and then the right hand after. It was over. That jab definitely got. Lance Gibson in an area where he was not ready. You saw the legs go stiff and those two jackhammer left hands. Big time win for Vladimir Tokov. A thunderbolt left from Vladimir Tokov and he puts the KO in his surname with his signature victory as he knocks Lance Gibson oh, Jr. Oh, out oh, and away oh, from the ranks oh, of the undefeated. Nikolai Mikhailov in his corner just going, oh yeah, that's what we all plan for. <laughs> Stunning first round finish for Vladimir Tokov. Improves to four and two, bounces back from a split decision loss to J.J. Wilson and hands Lance Gibson Jr. his first setback. And it's good that Lance Gibson Jr. is now on the stool. 
being tended to by his father, wondering what happened. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. Right now, he doesn't look like he has no memory of it. He doesn't realize what happened. They're telling him the fight's over, and he's he's arguing, saying no, because it's a moment in time that's gone. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end. One minute, two seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Vladimir Tokov. Well, his previous five fights went to the judges. He didn't need no stinking judges this time around. Vladimir Tokov with the knockout of his life as he vanquishes Lance Gibson Jr. And he does it in the opening round, bouncing back and improving to four and two in the Bellator MMA cage. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. The new Bellator MMA app is here. New look, new features, new fights. Watch live weigh-ins and prelims. Share your fight picks. Earn points and badges as you rank up to the heavyweight division and stay up to date on events, rankings, and news. For all the latest features, download the new Bellator MMA app. Available on the App Store and Google Play. Stunning knockout victory for Vladimir Tokov over the previously unbeaten Lance Gibson Jr. here at Pachango Summit at Pachanga Resort Casino in Temecula, California. And uh, Josh Thompson, how about Vladimir Tokov's power, my man? Man, that was so impressive with the jab. I was, never, I was never blessed with power, so I'm a little jealous. I gotta be honest. Big John knows this. He was in the cage with me several times. He's like, yeah, Josh, you never had power. I just had to come to grips with it. Anyways, look, we, we've got the middleweight Slater tonight, and I can't wait. You got Aaron Jeffries going against John Salter, and John Salter's been a mainstay in the Bellator middleweight division. Two-time title defender coming in trying to fight and win that middleweight title. John Salter, though, has kind of taken the middleweight by storm by coming in and getting two impressive victories and TKO stoppages. All he's got to do is continue to do what he did in those first two fights against John Salter, but it's easier said than done when you're dealing with someone like John Salter, who is just nasty and grimy, and once he gets that fight to the ground, it's going to be survival mode for Aaron Jeffries. Look, Morrow, this should be a great fight, but hey, for more action in the prelims, back down to you guys. All right, Josh, thank you very much, and a intriguing featherweight matchup submission. Savan, another second-generation fighter, Lucas Brennan, already ranked number 10 at 145. He takes on the veteran Josh San Diego. You say veteran, 38 years of age for Josh San Diego. He's got a lot of experience, 22, and so good at this moment. Lucas Brennan, a young prodigy. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. And for those joining us tonight live on the stream on YouTube at Bellator MMA and Showtime Sports, we welcome you to Bellator 293. Here at the prelims, we go three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner at 5'9", weighing in 146 pounds even. His professional record, nine wins, four losses out of Milpitas, California. Josh, the zookeeper, San Diego. And across the cage, an adversary out of the red corner at 5'10", weighing in 145.4 pounds, now ranked at number 10. He enters undefeated, seven victories, no defeats, out of Frisco, Texas, Lucas, the Skywalker, Brandon! In charge, referee.
Jonathan Romero. Lucas Brennan, 7-0. and oh. All five of his submission wins have come via choke. Josh San Diego, oh, yeah, 38, 4-1 oh, 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 inside the Bellator oh. cage. And he's fighting for the first time in 1,434 days. Let's see if cage corrosion <laughs> plays a factor, John. That's exactly it. But Josh San Diego is a good, clean fighter. Very skilled in the stand-up. And this is where Lucas Brennan, who we know is so skilled on the ground, needs to show that he's made the improvements to be able to be in there with Josh. Nice. Already touched with the left hand, forcing Brennan to change levels. Well defended by San Diego, backed up to the fence. Brennan trying to avoid the fate of the other second generation star. We had Lance Gibson Jr. just taste defeat for the first time. Brennan's father, Chris, a longtime mixed martial artist, also known for being very effective once he gets your neck. <laughs> the West Side Strangler, baby. Yeah, finally getting him down. Now, this is where Lucas Brennan, he lives on the ground here. He is so comfortable from all positions, be it him on the top position or on his back. Josh San Diego does not want to be on the ground with Lucas Brennan. And Brennan has five first round submission victories already on the back of San Diego with plenty of time left in the opening frame. And so mature beyond his years when you get a chance to talk to Lucas Brennan. 22 years of age, but again, second generation, Don't born on the him. mat, as they say, John. Absolutely, he has been on the mat since I've known him, which is a long time. But it is a matter of he's so good at transitioning from one technique to the next. That's what separates him. He might be going for your neck in one moment, and then the arm is coming, and then he's going after the leg. He can do it all. Sinking that choke in. San Diego Gordon trying to rip that lock off. You talk about diversity, John. He's got a arm triangle choke, the assassin choke. He's got an anaconda choke, the first forearm choke in Bellator MMA history, a neck crank, and a rear naked choke. I mean, he is as fluid, as effective, that's as trouble. crafty as they come. This is trouble. Yeah, that's the and there it is. Lucas Brennan does it again with his sixth first round submission win. And you gotta love a guy that goes after his strength. He didn't play around. He knew that Josh San Diego on the feet is dangerous. Went after the takedown, worked hard for it, comes up with the submission. That's an intelligent 22-year-old fighter. He is slick with it. And Lucas Brennan making it look so effective. And, and as you, we mentioned, the maturity, the IQ, the 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 calm, cool, collected, methodical way he approaches his class. And look at the beautiful hand play. He's controlling the wrist, and then when he can, uh, sneaks that choke and gets the lock in, and he's also twisting, turning that neck, making it a little more painful than the normal rear naked choke. You see that getting twisted? That's a lot of pressure. And when you have a squeeze, and that's what Lucas Brennan has, not everyone can squeeze with that same amount of pressure in the 145-pound weight class. The zookeeper ended up getting tamed by Lucas Brennan, and with his proud father, Chris Brennan, who I know I've told the story a million times, but he likes it when I tell it. Very first Bushido event, my very first MMA event, first fight. He's fighting Eiji Mutsuoka. He submits Eiji Mutsuoka. Referee says start again. He submits Eiji Mutsuoka again. <laughs> Only man in MMA history with two wins in one fight. You gotta love him. <laughs> Well, you gotta love Lucas Brennan. Skywalker, the sky is the limit. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it ends two minutes, 14 seconds into the very first round. The tap by way of a rear naked choke. Again, the winner by submission, still undefeated, Lucas Skywalker. Lucas Brennan, number 10 ranking now, a perfect 8-0 with six submissions, one knockout. And here's a Gen Z with a, a vinyl collection, John. Music to my ears. 
and, well, music to the ears of MMA fans everywhere. The return of Black Ice Joey Davis after a long, long hiatus. But before we get to his preliminary fight, let's uh, bring you up to speed on what's coming up at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. John, we talked about the heavyweight main event. How about that co-feature, Kat Singano, Leo McCord, to determine the number one contender at 145? This is a great fight, and you got to really give it to Kat Singano, who's sitting at number one. So she's actually putting her number one on the line against a tough fighter like Leah McCourt because she's saying, I don't want to just sit and wait for the championship match. I want to take on fights. I want to prove how good I am. Kat Singano, great wrestler. Leah McCourt really coming along in the stand-up with a great judo background. So cannot wait for that fight. Well, it has been 862 days since Joey Black Ice Davis has competed inside the Bellator MMA cage. In that time, he has continued to hone his craft under one of the best, former featherweight champion A.J. McKee, who is standing by with our JT. I'm here with A.J. McKee. A.J., you got one of your teammates, one of your closest brothers. You know, Joey Davis, he's been out for a bit. What people don't understand about him is that he's been a top-level wrestler all through high school, all through college, now a top-level MMA fighter for years. He's taken some time off. How has he been back in the gym? Um, man, having Joey back in the gym, it's iron sharpens iron, you know what I mean? So having him in the gym is always a blessing. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting him back in there and seeing what he's capable of. Um, his submissions have come together just full circle all together he's he's popping off catching my father and i so uh i'm excited for this fight you know it's it's been a nice layoff for him and uh you know through any trials and tribulations in life you know there's there's always something shining on the other side so uh this is his story and i'm looking forward to seeing how he bounces back well you and i talked probably a couple weeks back and when we were talking about it you said that when him being back in the gym not just the submissions the stand-up the speed everything it's almost like he's refreshed and then coming back Tell me, like, how have you seen him get better from the last time he was in the gym to now he's back? Um, I, I think that's just a big key, you know, is the time off. You know, so many just competitive athletes, we've been at it for so many years, back to back to back. That sometimes we just need a little break, you know, to release our mind and just kind of just kick back a little bit, you know. And then we come back and we realize that we're able to learn a lot more. So uh, I think this is, this, is a, this is one of those scenarios where Joey just took a little time off and he's going to come back on fire. Give me a prediction. I just, I, I don't know, man. He's got some of the sauciest finishes in, on the roster, you know what I mean? So you never know what to expect with Joey, but expect fireworks. You got a fight coming up later uh, this, this year. We haven't had a date yet? No dates announced? No, no dates yet. No coming dates. soon. Coming soon. Fingers crossed, man. Coming soon. <laughs> AJ McKee will face Patricky Pitbull in the lightweight World Grand Prix as we get set here for our next matchup. It will be contested in the welterweight division. Unbeaten Joey Davis coming off the longest layoff of his career takes on Jazzy Jeff Creighton. Jeff Creighton with a 6-3-1 record. Very tough fighter going against the, as we have said, undefeated 8-0 Joey Davis coming back. Is he going to come back better than ever? Here is Michael C. Williams. Tonight here at Petrava Resort Casino, the prelims advance now to the welterweight division set for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first the blue corner. At 5 foot 11, weighing in 169.8 pounds. His professional record six wins, three losses, one draw. By way of Jacksonville, North Carolina, he fights out of Temecula, California, Jazzy J. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 169.2 pounds, making his return to the cage. He enters undefeated at 8 and 0. Oh, he fights out of Compton, California, Joey Blackhawk Davis. And the referee in charge, Frank Trigg. Joey Black Ice Davis, should he improve to 9-0, he would be tied at first with middleweight champion Johnny Eblen for the longest active win streak with nine straight here in Bellator MMA. Jeff Creighton, he is making his Bellator MMA debut and goes on the attacker. 
so good to see Joey Davis back in the cage. He's got so much talent. I did his first fight, and he was nothing but a wrestler. Man, has he improved in all areas. He's so talented. And you'll see him spinning back kicks, all kinds of different attacks. Creighton just needs to be the guy that he is a grinder. He wants to get in, land shots, and make Joey pay. The question is, can he do it? How long can he do it for? Creighton with the early aggression on Joey Davis, and Davis with that trip takedown, inside trip, and of course, the wrestling background, but he is 8-0 with five KOs. All knockout victories have come in the opening round. Let's, let's just be honest, Joey Davis is one of three men who ever went through an NC2A career undefeated in wrestling. He was 133-0 at Notre Dame. Unbelievable collegiate wrestler. He is just good everywhere when it comes to grappling arts. Yeah, started at the age of six, was a four-time NC2A Division II National Wrestling Champion at Notre Dame College. And you know, as you mentioned, Unbelievable stats and putting the pressure on Creighton here with 333 left in the opening round. Yeah, it's hard to understand. You know, a lot of guys are going to think, well, I can get out from this position because they do it over and over and over with different guys. And then all of a sudden there's that one guy and it's you just see like, look at the hip pressure right now of Joy Davis. You saw him driving and dumping the hips down. That makes him incredibly heavy. And it's his ability to understand where to put his body and how to maintain the position that makes him so difficult to deal with. Grady wrestled in high school for Poway High School, one of the best programs in the nation, class of 2014. In early problems here with Joey Black Ice Davis. By the way, Creighton, part of his purse is going to be donated to America's Gold Star families, comes from a military family. Respect for that. But earning respect in the Bellator MMA cage is, is difficult. And against a guy like Joey Davis, who wants to make a statement in his return. Yeah, well, I really like what Creighton's trying to do here in trying to get back to his feet. He's working really hard, but he's working effectively. It's just that he can't get his legs away from Joey Davis. And then as soon as he gets his legs free, Joey's lacing the arm. He's just always one step ahead of him at this point. Creighton training out of Dan Henderson's Athletic Fitness Center. Team Quest here. Temecula, California. Ice, of course, with Team Body Shop and Antonio McKee. See, and right here, this is where Creighton's the one that's fighting. Right now, Joey Davis is holding on. He's controlling, but he's not fighting. He's not doing anything to damage Creighton, other than if you want to talk about elevating the heart rate a little bit. Nice switch maneuver. Looking to switch, but being pinned to the fence by Davis. A minute and a half left in the first double wrist lock by Creighton. And again, right now, Joy Davis is definitely winning the control. But he's not landing any kind of punches. There's nothing as far as damage. And you're seeing and Creighton with yes, little tiny shots. Talked about his elbow and the knees striking Arsenal. Creighton hasn't really had an opportunity to deliver some. We saw an elbow there. And he's, again, trying to neutralize the left hand of Davis. Trying to pop up as Davis again looking to close the grips and takes him back. That return to his seat. And what Joey needs to really think about doing is Matt returning him towards the center of the cage. Right now, you're seeing Creighton doing a very good job of keeping his back up on the cage. That's helping him with his balance point. He's able to allow his legs to be taken. His hands are free. Yes. Back to back a vertical to base. So Davis unable to do much with the takedown attempt, except control. Now final 15 seconds of the round. Can Creighton create some kind of separation? So we saw the takedown by Davis. 
Didn't see much else in terms of his offense. How do you score it after one, John, and why? No, I'm being honest. You know, I, I talked about the fact that I did Joy Davis's first fight ever, and he was a pure wrestler. Well, he just went back to that. And that is not the fighter that we last saw. He has got to open up his offense. Right now, I'm giving that round to Jeff Creighton. He's, he was the guy trying to actually fight. I had Joey Davis being a guy that's controlling. There is the legend. H-bomb himself, good, Dan Henderson, up, him. giving Creighton instructions. A lot of experience in the respective corners. November 19, 2020, the last time Joey Davis competed, beating Bobby Lee at Bellator 253 via unanimous decision. Jazzy Jeff Creighton making his Bellator Ready? MMA Ready? debut Fight. in search of his seventh win and again takes command of the center of the cage and comes up with a right hand. Switches to Southpaw. I love the counter right from Creighton. And I love the pressure of Creighton. He is not in any way backing off. He is coming forward, putting big pressure on Joey Davis. But the problem is just that right there where when you're near that cage and he turns you and now so it's your back on the cage. Brayton able to separate, reset from the southpaw stance. Flashes the jab back to orthodox. Davis on his front foot. Spinning back kick. We've seen him finish a fight with a spinning back kick as featherweight champion Chris Cyborg showing her support for Black Ice Joey Davis. She'll be watching our co-feature later tonight with vested interest. Katzengano versus Leah McCord on Showtime. Bellator 293's co-feature. Chris will be very, very aware of who wins that fight. That's, that's something that, you know, she's, she's not afraid of going in with anyone. That's what you gotta love about the champ. Body kick by Creighton. Moves in, level change by Davis, ends up with Crane on his keister one more time. So Davis is two for two in the takedown department. Question is, can he make it count? Exactly, let's see what he does with this position. You got the takedown, but now it's what do you do with the takedown? Just holding on to legs and being in the top position is not gonna win you the fight if your opponent is landing good strikes at times like Jeff Creighton is. No secret, his wrestling one of his strengths, and yet you look at his record, 8-0 with five knockouts. He's got some pop. He wants to be the next big thing, he says. He wants to be the next big star, John. Well, if you want to be the next big star, you've got to put on star-like performances. Taking nothing away from Jazzy Jeff Creighton, the 27-year-old, fighting out of Jacksonville, North Carolina, but residing in Valley Center, California, again training with the likes of Joe Stevenson, Dan Henderson, and Tarek Safadi, who applied his craft on Showtime during the Strike Force era. Yes, he did. Tarek became champion. Yes, welterweight. Joy doing a nice job of lacing that left arm of Jazzy Jeff. Just got it back. Gotta work, gotta work. Butterfly hooks in for Creighton. Maybe. Nice like job. Elevator, but scooting back up to his yeah, you, seat. You saw his shoulders going flat down on the mat. That's something he does not want to be in immediately. Stall leads to a stand up by referee Frank Trigg. Minute and a half left in the second. Both need to ratchet up the offense. Craig needs to try to stop the takedown. Creighton has landed a lot more strikes, but again, from a position once he was down. And a lot of them small strikes. Yes, and there's another takedown. And this is really gonna be a battle of 
What is the judge going to give credit to? Are they going to give credit to the wrestling? Oh, great back up to his feet early. And control of Joey or the small strikes of Creighton. There you go. Look at 10 of 19 for D Davis, 24 of 46 for Creighton. Both accurate. Anytime you're over 50%, it's a good night at the office. But Creighton with the, but like you say, smaller strikes, the, the wrestling of Davis, referee Frank Trigg. Pouring them to work. And you know they're doing that. <laughs> oh, they're working. They're working. It's a grind. You see that Creighton has slowed down with the strikes. Not near as many. And Davis determined to take Creighton off his feet. Joey Davis needs to be careful with that. Oh, no, no. The elbows from Creighton score to the body. Spins around. Now wide base by Creighton. Off the... That was a put back down. And that was a smart move by Craig because you can see Joy Davis is looking to elevate him. He wasn't able to do it because of it. Stop. Corners. So before we get your unofficial score, let's listen into the corners because I would be very interested to see what instructions are being given after two rounds. Down. You gotta you gotta punch a little more. You're not doing enough. I don't want them, he's not punching a lot either. But I don't want them to give him the round on no bullshit. So this round, dominate and punch more. When you got him up against the gate, thrust your hips forward and start looking for the leg lace to lock him so he can't keep moving. That boot right, that, that, everything looks good. It's good. He's tired. Right? Bring up to the shots and right back down to the tank. Joe Daddy Stevenson hey, and Dan Henderson. You got to take it to him. Stand up. Go get his ass. Hey, Go get everything. His... You got to finish him. You, you know what? The, uh, you finish the, this motherfucker. The battle Let's cry go. from Joe Let's Daddy go. Stevenson, who had. Well, more guts than just about well, it's, it's, it's always good when your your coach just talks pure technique. Third round, stay back. Third round. Third round, stay back. Graydon needs to unload. This is it. Bellator. MMA debut. Joey Davis, if he wants to be the next big thing, needs a dynamic vision. Finishes. Coach Antonio McGee saying the obvious. There's a sprawl by Graydon. He needs to throw punches. We need offense. And there again, the shot again stuffed by Creighton. And again, but he raw dogged it. He, he's going without throwing yes. punches. No, naked shot. Take down. You don't want to do that. That burns energy. Now, right now, he can elevate if he can suck those hips in. And the booze beginning to ring throughout the Pachanga Summit. Joey Davis received the hero's welcome but as he secures his fourth takedown. Question remains. He needs to maximize his position. Deliver damage. Utilize his offense. But Jazzy Jeff Creighton making it difficult for Davis to do so. Elbows from the top by Creighton again. Scoring blows. Score, scoring blows. And those are the Got to be honest, what, are, what is the hard thing, hard shots landing? They're all being landed right now by Creighton. He's 32 of 61 in terms of strikes. Davis, meanwhile, 10 of 20. But in, I mean, elbows all Creighton, takedowns all Davis. Exactly. And the real question when you're looking at this, Joey Davis is winning the wrestling match. There's yes, no six minutes it. and 44 seconds and counting of total control. But Jeff Creighton's winning the fight. In round one, Davis had three minutes and 55 seconds of ground control. Round two, two minutes and 10 seconds. And now closing in on one minute here in the third and final round with three minutes to go. Joey needs to listen to his coach, Antonio McKee. He told him, you need to punch more. You get to a grounded position. I need you to open up and start landing shots. And he hasn't been able to do that. Braden tried to frame out and 
Creates some separation, delivers again. These are scoring shots, elbow strikes to the body of Joey Davis. The offense is coming from Jazzy Jeff Creighton. And you can take a look, and there was seven elbows thrown. Four of them landed hard. 17 of 21 in the elbow department See now, for Creighton. Joey Davis should make sure that he, if he picks him up here, turn him. Do not put him down against that Whitewash in the elbow department. Look at that. Zero. To zip. And that's from the top position with Joey Davis, 18 of 22. Yacht continues to add to that tally. Fans exasperated, Creighton exasperated. Referee Frank Trigg on the spot. And Joey Davis putting his weight on Creighton, but not much else, John. Nice, I, nice frame by Creighton. He's framing that arm out and then landing the elbow, knee inside. Again, take a look at the offense of Joey Davis. There's nothing There's not other than grappling. Uppercuts on the inside and knee by Creighton, and it's all Jeff Creighton in the offensive department. Clipped him with an uppercut. Yeah, absolutely did. You're right about that. That was a clean shot, Landon. Joey Davis in trouble here in his return to Bellator MMA. Yes, six of 11 in the takedown department but absolutely unable to get any offense generated. Referee Frank Trigg calls for the break, much to the delight of the crowd here at Pachanga Summit. Just over a minute left in the fight. Creighton looking for the switch knee. Frames out again, John, and it's Creighton who is initiating contact. Exactly. Who's coming forward? Jeff Creighton's coming forward now. Joey Davis has used a ton of energy in trying to not only get Jeff Creighton down, but keep him down when he does. Has not been effective as a fighter. He's been effective as a grappler, but not as a fighter. A plethora of elbows from Jazzy Jeff Creighton. Stymieing the offense of Joey Davis, fighting for the first time in 862 days. There's a lot to be said about how one looks in the gym, how active you stay, another mat return. But John, nothing compares to the experience under the bright lights inside the Bellator. No, oh, under the lights, so different, so much faster. Everything is just, it's intensified. It will be up to the three judges to render a verdict. I will be very interested to see how they score this one. Speaking of scoring, sir, your unofficial scorecard and why? Unofficially, I have Jeff Creighton winning this fight. Look, this is a fight. It's not a match. This is about landing shots. It's about damage. It's about doing things that affect your opponent in a negative way. Now, Joy Davis did that with grappling as far as control. But control is the last thing that we go to. It is who has the effect of striking and grappling. Well, the grappling was basically even because Joy Davis was trying to be offensive. But you can see right here, it was the striking of Creighton. He landed more shots, good elbows, knee inside, and zero basic striking from Joey Davis. There just was not a lot. In fact, the total strikes landed 11 throughout 15 minutes of fighting. That's less than one a minute. Of course, every fight is scored round by round using the 10-point must system as we go to the fight stats. and. Uh, Pretty one-sided, my man. And that's it, except for that big that seven takedowns. as far as takedowns on the side. And look, that looks great. How should takedowns be scored? Takedowns are scored based upon what do you do with the position if you get the takedown. It's not only the takedown. Now, it can be you get one with a lot of amplitude, meaning you bring them up, bring them down. It's like a strike. You didn't see that. Great. Tonight. You didn't see any of that. All right. We're all waiting to find out, does Joey Davis improve to 9-0? Or does Jazzy Jeff Creighton record the upset in his Bellator MMA debut? AJ McKee offering respect to that Jazzy Jeff Creighton. Dan Henderson told me, watch out for my guy, Jazzy Jeff. And for jo Joey Davis, long layoff. Let's see if it, if it paid off. Let's uh, go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now.
to your three judges at cage side where your first judge sean dallas hall scores the fight 29 to 28 seeing the fight for creighton your second judge at cage side chris crail 29 to 28 he scores the fight for davis your third and final judge at cage side michael bell 29 to 28 but the winner by split decision jazzy Well, Dan Henderson knows his MMA. Jazzy Jeff Clayton pulling off the upset, ruining the return of Joey Black Ice Davis. Davis goes down to defeat for the first time. Jazzy Jeff Clayton via split decision. 1-0 inside the Bellator cage. Judges got it right. Judges got it right, no doubt about it. That, that is the man that should have won that. He was in there fighting. It was not a wrestling match. You don't win MMA fights by purely wrestling. It has been a banner night for Bellator MMA debutantes. And speaking of debuts, hey, coming up in April, Showtime Sports premieres a must-see investigative series with exclusive new evidence and interviews detailing one of the largest cash heists in history and the former mixed martial artist who was the mastermind behind it. He wanted to be the world champion in the UFC. He was going to be a big superstar. He earned that name, like Lin Lee Murray. When in doubt, throw a punch. He just happens to be involved in the largest cash robbery in the world. <sighs> the robbery, yeah. He's definitely not sane. <laughs> this story was an absolute belter. There's no two ways about it. Heists, huge amounts of money, armed gang, disguises, kidnapping. The sort of thing you see in Hollywood films. We'd never seen that for real in a robbery. Yeah, how much are they nicked? About a million pounds. Tens of millions. 20. But in fact, it was 52,990,760 pounds. 92.2 million dollars. How much would they have got away with if they turn up with a bigger lorry? A policeman, shorty, hoodie, Mr. Average, high vis, driver, and stopwatch. This theft represented the largest amount ever stolen. It's almost unbelievable. It's the equivalent of Fort Knox that had been breached. Whoa, that's insane. Lee, who is told not to talk about this at all. fiendishly clever plan, which, up to the moment they drove away, had worked flawlessly. You do not want to miss that docu-series. Almost unbelievable? No. It is unbelievable, but it happened. Truth is stranger than fiction as we continue with Bellator 293 preliminary action, featherweight division. Pam Sorensen, ranked number five, takes on the undefeated Sarah Collins, who was making her Bellator debut. Yeah, as you can see in the reach department, Sarah Collins has a beautiful five-inch reach advantage. We'll see if she can make that part of getting a win against Pam Sorensen. Here is Michael C. Williams. Tonight here at Bellator 293, the prelims continue as we go three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot seven, weighing in 145.8 pounds, making her Bellator debut. She brings an undefeated professional record of three and zero oh from Melbourne, Australia. Sarah. across the cage her adversary out of the red corner at five foot six weighing in 145.2 pounds right at number five she stands with nine wins five losses out of minneapolis minnesota introducing pam bam Sorensen, and your referee in charge jason herzog 
Pam Bam Sorensen, former Invicta featherweight champion, looking to snap the first two fight losing streak of her career. Sarah Collins comes into Bellator, a judo black belt, a member of the Australian national judo team for eight years, competed internationally, and is 3 and 0 to begin her MMA career, fighting for the first time in the Bellator cage. And immediately Sorensen comes forward with combination. Counter rights from the Southpaw Collins, stinging the face of Sorensen. And Collins going downstairs, threatening with a knee. Nice timing on the kick by Sorensen. Nice timing on that three punch combination as well. Nice left uppercut on the inside as she had the collar time momentarily. I like the angles that Collins is, are, is using early. Yeah, she's creating some problems here for Pam Sorensen. Pam's got a lot of experience in the cage, though, so that's going to help her in riding out some of this. But we've seen that early on, Sarah Collins, her judo is very good. She's good with her trips, beautiful throws. We'll see if she can get Pam Sorensen down here. Sorensen coming off a unanimous decision set back against Kat Zingano, who we will see in action in the co feature of Bellator 293 against Leah McCourt to determine the number one contender of the featherweight division, the judoka, putting her judo skills on display with the takedown. Right in Kezakatami, you see her trying to control that arm, but she is a little bit high. She wants to make sure that that arm stays up off of the mat, keeping Pam Sorensen's back flat. Collins has one submission win, an arm bar submission. The other two victories went the distance, but early success against the number five ranked Sorensen. And Collins told us that her grappling and her power would be her biggest advantages over Sorensen. We see the edge in grappling early. Trap the arm there. Take a look at what she's going after. A straight arm lock with her legs. Might switch it into a key lock. That is a painful maneuver right now. Crafty Collins. Very nicely done. She's controlling it again. People don't understand with a with a judoka that has the skill level of Sarah Collins. When you get into this Kezakatami, they're so good at controlling this position. A lot of people think, oh, I can just take my leg and flip and take the back. It's not that easy. Now, now with the arm in this position, Sam Sorens is in real trouble. And putting the squeeze, raining down punches and strategizing as well John Collins trying to finish so yeah, she switched it she does Sarah Collins in her Bellator MMA debut records the first round submission win the 32 year old is a perfect 4-0 with two submission victories beautifully done we're talking about Kezika time there that's also called a scarf hold here in the US but the scarf hold she was so good with and did a fantastic job of bringing the one arm and bringing it away from the body. And once it was away from her body, you have a hard time moving the rest of you. You can see where that arm's at, very tight. Then she switched it from the straight arm lock. She went more into the Americana or key lock maneuver with it. Pam Sorensen doing everything she could to get out, but here comes that key lock maneuver. That's now on the shoulder. It is tight. Beautifully controlled by Sarah Collins. Look at her take those hips, move them back. That is a beautiful submission. Collins coming from down under Melbourne, Australia. Resilience Training Center with Daniel Kelly, Andrew Colgrave, Alan Potter, and all the rest. And a disconsolate Pam Swordson tasting defeat for the third straight time. And has been submitted for the second time in her career. But Sarah Collins, perfect 4-0 showing some tremendous technique. That's a huge win for Sarah Collins. We're talking about a former Invictus yes. featherweight champion. Who's faced the best of the best. Absolutely. Big win for Sarah Collins. Huge victory. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. Two minutes, 43 seconds into round number one. The tap by way of an arm bar by submission. The winner still undefeated Sarah Collins.
Australia Sarah Collins comes to California and picks up a huge victory fighting for the first time in Bellator MMA the smile says it all coming up at 10 Eastern 7 Pacific on Showtime in the words of the loonies we've got five on it main card with five fantastic fights culminating with a heavyweight showdown Marcelo Gome ranked number five number seven ranked Daniel James both have won four straight with four finishes this one has the potential to be explosive and with more on that fight let's go the man who has always been explosive with his analysis. Left, right, and center. Josh Thompson, drop some knowledge on us, brother. I was hoping you were to drop some more bars, man. I got five <laughs> on it. <laughs> Look in the main event tonight. From we the got... Bay Area, like yourself. <laughs> I got five on it. Look, in the main event tonight, we got Marcelo Gome versus Daniel James, and this fight is looking to be fire. Both of these guys, after talking with them this week, had talked about, I'm gonna stand. Now, I was expecting when, when reviewing this fight, when this fight was announced, that Marcelo Gome would really look to try to get this fight to the ground and put Daniel James in uncomfortable positions. But Marcelo, this week, has said, look, I feel fast, I feel quick on my feet, and I think my footwork is gonna be enough. And when he fought Davion Franklin, who was explosive, he had a lot of problems in the early round. But as the fight went on, he was able to push the pace and really break Davion Franklin down. And that's exactly what he's gonna look to try to do tonight. I think if he sticks and moves, uses his footwork, and is able to get James to the fence, he can have success. But man, Daniel James has got some power. He exploded on the scene last November against ranked Tyrell Fortune. And I gotta be honest, I thought Tyrell Fortune would be able to get the takedowns, hold him down. Heavyweights are not the best sometimes at getting off their back. But man, Daniel James proved me wrong. He was able to sprawl and brawl, and that uppercut was heard across the arena, and he was electric in his hometown of Chicago. I'm telling you guys, this fight, don't blink, don't miss it. It's gonna be explosive from beginning to end. Moro, I can't wait to watch the heavyweights get down later tonight. The heavyweights always have the potential to bring highlight reel action. John Marcelo Gome, Daniel James. James going full circle now. Began his pro career in Bellator 2014. Went across the pond, returned in thunderous fashion with that uppercut. And now both of them jockeying for a uh, position at a potential title shot. Ryan Bader, the champ, Linda Bissell, expected to get the next shot. Linton is looking to get the next shot, but both of those guys are saying, yeah, but guess who's coming next? And they're both expecting a win here tonight. They both believe in what they can do. I can't, can't wait to watch it. Well, we can't wait to watch this next matchup here at Bellator 293 in the lightweight division. My uh, fellow Canadian, Mandel Nalo, hails from Vancouver, British Columbia, fighting out of Toronto, representing TriStar Gym and the professor himself, Firas Sahabi, a man who was part of the uh, GSP legacy, George St. Pierre. And there's Adam the Bomb Piccolotti, who has alternated wins and losses over his last six fight uh, fights coming off a loss to Mansur Barnoui who's expected to really uh, make some noise in that lightweight world Grand Prix but with Nalo and Piccolotti speaking of making noise this is it right now they need to will the real Piccolotti and Nalo stand up that is exactly it both these guys need this fight they need an impressive win Take a look, 71.5 inch reach for Adam Piccolotti, 75 for Nalo. When you're looking at this fight, Nalo needs to use that 75 inch reach and keep it on the feet while Piccolotti's gonna try to take him down and use his submission skills. It's the bomb versus rat garbage. A man who's never garbage. Here's Michael C. Williams. Love that name. Here at Pachanga Resort Casino, Bellator MMA now presents a featured matchup as we go three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Producing the blue corner first at five foot eleven, weighing in 154.8 pounds. His professional record: nine wins, just two losses. Out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Introducing Mandel Rat. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5 foot 11 weighing in 156 pounds even as a professional he brings 13 victories five defeats out of half moon bay california Adam, the bomb of piccolotti and the referee in charge rafael davis 
Adam Piccolotti has three first round of finishes, one knockout, two submissions for Nalo. All nine wins have come inside the distance, including seven first round finishes. So this one could get started in a hurry. Nalo, very creative in his striking. Piccolotti, we know, has a great submission game. Six of his 13 wins have come due to his submission prowess, but looking to bounce back from the loss to Barnui. Now, though, looking to build on that knockout win over Bryce Logan. Piccolotti fighting out of Raul Castillo Martial Arts, CSA and AK. So both of them have respected Cornerman John. Oh, no doubt about it. And Piccolotti's really improved his stand up under CSA with Kieran Fitzgibbons. Fantastic coach. We've always known he's had a great ground game, but now his stand up is much smoother and he's getting a lot oh, more confidence. Yes. Nice right hand over the top there by Piccolotti. Really, Nalo with a chance to build some momentum. You look at his record, nine and two with one no contest, and yet you, you get the feeling he's even better than his record he indicates. Is, you know, more you just said it, it's exactly the truth. He is really a good, skilled fighter. It's just at times, you just look and he just has those days where it, it's almost like it didn't show up. And again, we talk about Piccolotti where you look, you know, a win, a loss, a win, a loss, a win, a loss, and you, you know, consistently inconsistent and yet facing tough competition. How does how does Piccolotti begin to put it together? Caught that head kick from Nalo. He's gonna have to double block that instead of just putting that glove up. But Piccolotti just needs to go back to being who he is and use his hands, which have gotten so much better, to set up that takedown because on the ground he does have an advantage here. It's not that Nalo's not good on the ground, it's that Piccolotti is outstanding on the ground. So Got to get to where your strength is. Aggressive Piccolotti lands the left hand. Go back to when Piccolotti fought Benson Henderson. He destroyed Benson in the first round of their fight. All through, takedown and the positioning of his body, you know, multiple submission attempts. Oh, kick to the midsection by Nalo. Piccolotti from Southpaw again, the high kick under the armpit of Piccolotti. Nalo continues to go the kicking route while Piccolotti is sitting down on his punches. Nice counter by Nalo. Nalo needs to go back to those kicks, to the body, to the head. He's landing, and even though you're seeing Piccolotti get some of that, you know, steam taken off, he's eating a lot of that. Nalo on his back foot, almost as if he's luring Piccolotti in. Piccolotti has that left hand. Cox, Southpaw following Nalo. There's a lead right hook from Piccolotti that scored. Solid shot by Piccolotti. And that's why you're seeing Nalo get some space. Delivers the round. Under two minutes left in the first frame. Another kick from Mandel Nalo. Piccolotti naked shot. Backs Nalo to the cage. Nalo trying to defend the takedown. A tenacious Piccolotti. And this is what you would have expected from Piccolotti. You know, so far in this fight, looking basically over three minutes of time. Oh, the stand up. I am. Take down by Piccolotti. The mad return looking to do it again. And this time attacking the neck. Nicely done taking the back. Beautiful figure form, body triangle. Piccolotti has five rear naked choke submission wins and one neck crank. Very comfortable from this position. Look, he's the body lock. Outstanding grappler. He's got a ton of skill. He just needs it. He's got a minute's worth of time and take take all the time you need to set up. Yeah, the body triangle really tight here and Nalo trying his best to blindly defend. And now into full mount is Piccolotti, ground and pound. Nalo again giving up his back. A lot of movement from both guys. Beautiful movement by Nalo to try to get out of that. And nice shots by Piccolotti under the arm and with the right hand clean. And again, we talk about that flow on top. Look at yes. how Piccolotti is flowing. Well, it's interesting. He gave us a quote that seems apropos now. Music is not the notes. Music is the space between the notes. And the way that he applies it to fighting, it's all about the transitions, John. And he's absolutely right, man. And right now, he has just been flowing in the positions as far as the ground. Nalo getting back to his feet. Very nice job by Mandel Nalo to get himself back up. 
Yeah, going from striking to wrestling and so forth, but Nalo able, as you mentioned, to get back up on his feet. Once you get that arm on the other side, just like he just did, now he's able to square up with Piccolotti. First five minutes relegated to history. We'll listen in to the corners and then we'll get your unofficial score, Big John. Listen, he's shifting on you and he's throwing hooks. So don't be shy to cover when he comes close to you. You're hurting him with the legs, but listen to me. You gotta keep him at a distance. When he comes close to you, you gotta cover. You're taking with when you cover, he's gonna shoot on you. You gotta be careful. Okay, you gotta go tend those hooks. And you gotta go go ten against the legs. Him shooting on the legs. Don't let him touch your legs. Let's go, baby. Really good advice if you're looking at it from Zahabi. He's sitting there telling him, look, you're doing great in the stand-up, and he was. And it's a matter of, when you take a look at this, it's a 10-9 round for Adam Piccolotti. Nalo had his moments when Piccolotti got the fight to his range on the ground and took over. Spinning back kick to the liver of Piccolotti. Flush hit for Nalo to begin round two. So a competitive opening five minutes, a much more aggressive start for Mandel Nalo. And, and like we said in the first round, I think those kicks are a difference maker. He needs to really start to utilize them. He is 12 for 13 thus far. Going for that spinning kick that was intercepted by Piccolotti. And we've seen again Nalo with five knockouts. The statistics again speak to what we have uh, waxed poetically about. <laughs> And Nalo has a Superman punch knockout win, a knee knockout, a two head kick KOs. So very effective when it comes to scoring the knockout blows in a variety of ways. But notice the difference in the positioning of Mandel Nalo in the start of this round. P Piccolotti in the first round was moving him back and gaining everything that he wanted at the time that he wanted. Now Nalo is making him stay. He's not backing off of him. He's not just giving ground the same way, and he's using that front kick as a jab to right. push him back. The leg jab and Moy tight the head kick connects. And Nalo really feeling fluid now in the kicking department. That right foot proving to be a nightmare for Piccolotti who walks in with the left. Like I said, Nalo needs, need, really needs to keep this just like it is right here. Use Distance. the range and then use those kicks because the kicks are getting through, more and they have an effect. And he's attacking the lead leg now. Cap kicks, check by Piccolotti. Piccolotti sitting down on his punches, stalking Nalo, but being kept at bay with the jab and the kicks. And there's the level change, and immediately Piccolotti puts the hook in, taking the back of Nalo, but Nalo calm under fire. Right now, he's taking his time. He just needs to start to work his way through the position here. But well done by Piccolotti Absolutely. to close the distance. Well, he had to. Yes, he did. Let's take a look at what started to happen in this, and you got to get back to your strength. This is Adam Piccolotti's strength. Now he's getting in that body lock position. We'll yep. see if he can start to elevate. Now, and that's not easy. You go from a body lock position with a guy that tall, they kind of scrape their feet on the ground. They just become much heavier. Yeah, waist lock here now being employed in those short knees to the legs. Nalo turns in, however. Now over under. Just past the midway point of the round and the fight. Important battle here. At 155 pounds. Nalo needs to create space. Oh. There, there you go. Oh. Sweeping elbow misses for Piccolotti. There's that kick to the midsection again by Nalo. Keeping it at mid-range. Lunges in with the jab. Two minutes left in the round. Now you're seeing, look at this. what I'm talking about. Nalo is basically holding his ground a lot more, and he needs to do that. Use those kicks. Push him back with the kicks, yes, gain small, that center. Small steps being taken by Piccolotti. They're utilizing some footwork. Kick from Nalo, unable to get Piccolotti within the range he wants to be. Just over 90 seconds left in the middle frame. Nice jab from Nalo, stinging the face of Piccolotti. 
Piccolotti lead right. Yeah, when Piccolotti switches to that southpaw position, you see him, he's trying to step outside of the foot of Nalo because he wants that left hand straight down the pipe. Yeah, Piccolotti fishing for a front kick to the face. A minute 11 left in the second. Nalo utilizing lateral movement. Piccolotti shoots in for the low single. And manages to take Nalo down momentarily and then getting back up. Nalo giving up his back. Roll through, though. Beautiful Dude. action here in this round. That's a reversal right there. Nalo, he, he knew exactly where he was at. He went through with it, but there oh, you go. Arm triangle. Looking for the arm triangle. 40 seconds left in the round. Nalo has never been submitted. And you're, hearing, you're hearing the referee say action. They've given a lot of action. Yes, they <laughs> have. A whole lot spirited affair through two rounds between Adam Piccolotti and Mandel Nalo. Round three next. We will begin Bellator 293 with what should be a terrific light heavyweight matchup. Sullivan Cauley, he is 5-0 with five first round knockouts attempting to become the first Bellator fighter to record six consecutive first round knockouts to begin his career. Hey, Luke Trainer comes across the pond fighting for the first time in the USA once beaten, but all six of his wins have come inside the distance. Something's gotta give at 205 as we begin Bellator 293 with Cauley versus Trainer, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. Your score, sir. Right now, I have this dead even. I thought Randall Nalo came out in the second Seconds round and did exactly what he was supposed to do. He landed clean shots for most of it. Yes, there were a couple grappling exchanges where I think a lot he probably got the better of him a little bit, but not Last any round. damage off of it. I think we have an even fight, 1919. Could very well come down to the third and final round. Adam Piccolotti looking to get back into the win column. Nalo looking for a second consecutive victory. And Nalo on the back foot, fine with the jab, delivers the right down the middle. Piccolotti in the center line, but lunges forward again. Power shots left, right, and he gets caught with that right as he was off balance throwing the body. Exactly. Hit. He didn't get hurt, he got touched, but he wasn't hurt. Biggest adjustment each has to make in order to secure this final round. Well, I think for Adam Piccolotti, he needs to get back to being the guy who's the aggressor. Be sure that he is cognizant of when those kicks are coming, especially that teep up the middle. You got to be careful of it. You've got to get this fight back into the grappling range and get on the ground. For Nalo, you've got to utilize your range, just like he's doing right now. Movement, but get back to those kicks. That teep up the middle has been money for you. Use it. Don't allow him to push you back into the cage. Little change by Piccolotti secures his second takedown with one minute gone in the final round and scooping up his legs, pinning Nalo to the fence. And again, looking to control the back as Adam Piccolotti has the hooks in. And here with three minutes and 40 seconds left, lots of time for Adam Piccolotti to work, looking for the choke. That was a beautiful a take, of the, take of the back, and that, that is a nasty face crank. Again, Mandel Nalo has yet to be submitted for Adam Piccolotti. Six of his 13 wins have come via submission, and in a fight so close, Piccolotti needs to exploit this dominant position. Piccolotti was thinking about going to the arm triangle. I think he's more in tune with, I want to hold position. I don't want to take any chances. I'm comfortable where I'm at. So you're going to see Adam Piccolotti using this base. He's trying to gift wrap that arm right now, land some shots, and just start doing damage to Nalo. And this is exactly what you were saying. We are, what does each guy do? This is what Adam Piccolotti needed to do. You get the fight into your world, use your skill set, and just beat him down. Piccolotti looking for his 
what would be record sixth submission win in Bellator's lightweight division. But here now, full mount, putting pressure on Nalo, just past the midway point of the final round. Off Piccolotti staying busy with short right strikes to the body. Nalo trying somehow to reverse his fortunes, but in danger of when he tries to giving up his back. Yeah, but you gotta move because yep. if you stay where you're at, you're gonna lose this. So an Man, L, an L's an L. A good job though of keeping the pressure, heavy pressure on Nalo, has his back again. Piccolotti doing a beautiful job of just riding that top position. That's tight now, this is trouble. Nice and job. Beautiful job by Nalo relieving the grip, but a minute 40 left. Really nice job by Mandel now not to panic, just to work his way through it. 33-year-old in his 13th professional fight, elbows ground and pound from the back from Adam the bomb. Piccolotti would love to land the fight ending bomb or submission. Wide base as Nalo back to his feet. Not for long, though, and again, there's the rear naked choke being employed by Piccolotti. Great job by Nalo to defend. The arm's still in place. Now he's, you see the good positioning, but man, he's going palm to palm. That still can be tight. Under a minute left in the fight. Nalo trying to fight his way through it. That is not a comfortable position. Is it, Be beautiful hips by Adam Piccolotti right now. Is it going to be night, night, Nalo, or can he survive and again breaks the survive Nalo survives that attempt, but again. Go, and that right go. there, he's, he's hiding his hands on the ground. That's a lot more difficult for Nalo. He's going to end up going out if he stays with this. It's he over. Won't. Adam the Bob Piccolotti secures the late submission win over Mandel Nalo. Nalo forced to tap out for the first time in his career as Piccolotti secures his seventh submission with just seconds left on the clock. That was beautifully done by Adam Piccolotti because there was a lot of moments where, man, look at Mandel Nalo was doing some great stuff in defending here. You look how he's taking and pulling the arms off. But when he went here, see how he's hiding the hands. Now the hands are on the ground, so when he pulls, there's friction, and you cannot get that same grip. You can't pull the arms off. Very smart move by Piccolotti. Once he decided to put those hands down, now they're hidden on the ground. His head's in a position covering one side. Nalo's head is covering the other. Very well done by Adam Piccolotti. And that's his fifth consecutive submission win via RNC. And again, for Nalo, the first time that he's forced to submit, much to the chagrin of his coach, Fira Sahabi. But he uh, consoles Nalo, who tastes defeat for the third time. But Adam Piccolotti in the third round, down the stretch, John, shows his his resilience, his grit, and his acumen, and the submission prowess. That intelligence, you know, because you talked about what does he need to do? He needs to go back to where his strength is, and that is the ground. Let's That's where he went. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end of four minutes, 26 seconds into the third and final round. The tap by Way of the rear naked choke by submission. The winner, Adam the Bob Piccolotti. A confidence boosting of victory by Adam the Bomb Piccolotti returning to the win column now 10 and a five. And uh, erasing the taste of that defeat to Barnui and right, coming up. <laughs> Top of the hour, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Bellator 293 main card from Pachanga Summit. We've got Marcelo Gome against Daniel James in a battle of heavyweight finishers. Katz and Gano and Liam McCourt to determine the number one contender for the Women's Featherweight Championship. And Josh Thompson will now give us pearls of wisdom about the main card opener as we've got Sullivan Cully, 5-0 with five knockouts, JT. But Luke Trainer fighting for the first time in America. Hey, all six of his wins have become before the final bell. Is it the glasses that make
make you think that I have some sort of wisdom to offer? Is that really what it is? I've heard it all week. In the light heavyweight division, we've got Sullivan Coley and Luke Trainer, and both of them this week have talked about what they are good at. But Sullivan Coley has made it very clear. I'm not going to die on the hill trying to stand with him. I know the easiest route is getting the takedown, utilizing my wrestling. He's like, but he's a fool if he thinks that I will not stand with him. Now, Luke Trainer says he needs to make it a dog fight. He wants to make sure that he's pushing Sullivan Coley backwards, touching him with the tip kicks, the long jab, being the enforcer. When you look at the two of these guys at the weigh-ins, Luke Trainer has a six and a half inch reach advantage and a little bit of a height advantage on that. And he's going to look to use that reach advantage to hit to his advantage as this fight carries on. I don't know how you spit these bars, Moro, but you're really good at it. I'm not as good as you can tell as I repeat myself. So back down to you, Moro. Hey, no worries. It bears repeating, my man. That should be a tremendous way to kick off Bellator 293. Undefeated Sullivan Cully, Luke Trainer 6 and 1. We get ready for action in the lightweight division. Magic Mike Hamill taking on Nick Nyquil Brown. Man, Mike Hamill, action packed is a great word for him because this guy just comes 68 inch reach against Nick Brown with 72.5. But Nick Brown is a ground specialist. So we're going to see who can dominate the ground position. Here is Michael C. Williams. Tonight here at Photographer's Orc Casino, we go now three five-minute rounds, and we'll stay right here in the lightweight division. As we introduce first the blue corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 155.6 pounds. He has professional record, 13 wins, two losses out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania, Nick Nyquist. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 155.6 pounds as a professional. Nine victories, five defeats by way of Green River, Wyoming. He fights out of Phoenix, Arizona, Magic. And your referee in charge, Frank Trigg. Magic Mike Hamill on a two-fight win streak has won first-round KO. Hey, Nick Brown turned 33 yesterday of his 13 wins. Nine Thank have you. come, or make that seven have come in the opening round. So, Brown, we want to get off to a quick Ready? start. Hamill Fight. making it known that this product of the MMA lab ready to go on a big win streak. And hey, as advertised, they get off to a quick start. Brown tags him with a right hand and follows up with a body kick. Mike Hamill never waits for anyone. He comes out to fight every time I have watched this guy. He is action packed. He backs off of nobody. You know, he is just good. He went. You got to figure he went with Usman Nurmagomedov, the lightweight champion when Nurmagomedov first came to Bellator. Took him to a decision. Another right hand lands for Brown, and John uh, Hamill told us, hey, when it comes to... Oh! Get that kick! Left hand kick! Rattled Brown! Knocked him down, and Magic Mike Hamill on oh. top of Brown! Magic Mike Hamill with a first round knockout! Yeah, it may have been Nick Brown's birthday yesterday, but it's Magic Mike Hamill who just lit him up like a candle and blew him away. Well, I'll tell you what, that was explosive. That left high kick landed flush, and from there he went after him. And I do believe that Nick went out for a moment. I think Mike actually knocked him back in. It happens. And so Nick feels like he is being cheated. I don't think he was. I think this was a good call by Frank Trigg. Watch the left high kick. That lands flush on the jaw. He's still there because you see him starting to actually try to hold himself going backwards. Now take a look. When he flattens out right there, when you flatten that way. Oh, yeah. That is a good call by Frank Trigg. That was a giant shot that he took. Big shots right there. Mike Hamill with the one palacious win. Take a look right here, Marlon. This is where, you know, a lot of people look. He gets hit right there. You see him go flat on his face. And then goes flat 
He is not that he didn't come back, but he kind of got knocked back into consciousness. It's something we never realized would happen. Never knew it could happen, but you just saw it. Mike Hamill did his job. That is a big time win. It's a magic trick, courtesy of Magic well, Mike hello. Hamill with his fourth knockout victory. Improves to 10 and five, three and two here in Bellator MMA. Benson Henderson, the recently retired lightweight great, congratulating his MMA lab teammate as Nick Brown gets stopped for the first time in his career. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it ends 42 seconds into round number one. The winner by TKO Magic, Mark Hamill. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, Magic Mike Hamill. And you talk about magic. That left high kick landed right on his jawline. And then you went after him. It looked like he went out almost twice, and you kind of knocked him back in. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I've been training my ass off for 15 months, 15 months without a fight, and it got over with in 15 seconds. That's how good I am. That's how good I am. I'm going to be a household name in this fight. That's three wins in a row for you in this cage. You are getting on a roll in the lightweight division. Who should you be fighting? Ah, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm coming into my own. You know, I got, I got my big brother, Benson Henderson, over there, who's kind of paved the pathway for me. And so I'm just coming in every single day, busting my ass. That's three in a row. A couple of years ago, I told you I was going to get it to 10. So we're on our way, baby. Sounds good to me. Congratulations on a spectacular knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Magic Mike Hamill. Benson Henderson celebrating with the fans here at Pachanga Summit. Magic Mike Hamill with his third consecutive victory was studying to get his degree to become an elementary school teacher, decided to pursue fighting instead. And hey, he just delivered a lesson in violence as the MMA lab now two and well we continue as we've got one more and it could be explosive as well the heavyweights conclude the Bellator 293 prelims after this wanted to be world champion in the USC. He just happens to be involved in the largest cash robbery in the world. This is the sort of thing you see in Hollywood films. Heists, armed gang, huge amounts of money. The policeman, shorty, hoodie, Mr. Average, high vis, driver and stopwatch. Fiendishly clever plan, which up to the moment they drove away, had worked flawlessly. Catching lightning, only on Showtime. Streaming with Paramount Plus. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. Pachanga Summit at Pachanga Resort Casino, Temecula, California, 90-minute drive from Los Angeles, where we put a cap on what has been an explosive night of preliminary action with what could potentially be another explosive encounter. The heavyweights go at it. Christian Edwards moving on up to heavyweight, taking on the veteran Rakim Cleveland. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome our next fighter to the cage, Rakim, the Boogeyman, Cleveland. 
Always looking to be paid in full. The 33-year-old Rakim, the boogeyman, Cleveland. 22 victories, 20 inside the distance, 14 knockouts, six submissions. Looking for his first win here in Bellator, but always, always a, a, a litmus test for his opponents. And tonight we have a guy who spent his last seven fights at 205, Christian Edwards, hoping for, well, better results at heavyweight, but don't look past Rakeem Cleveland. No, look, Rakeem's got a ton of experience. The two guys that he lost to coming into the Bellator cage are both in the top 10, Steve Mowry and Tyrell Fortune. So Rakim is a beast when he gets going on a roll. He's got good stand-up, he's heavy on top, so you cannot count him out. And now we welcome his opponent, Christian Payne Edwards. 24-year-old Christian Edwards moving up to heavyweight after his, spending his last seven fights at light heavyweight. Comes off the loss to Grant Neal last April. Felt it was very competitive. He felt it was close, but wasn't able to get off his back in the last round, and that's how he feels he ultimately lost the decision. Yeah, Johnny told us the weight cut was really depleting him more than he realized, so he feels that heavyweight is going to be more prepared and skilled than ever before. Well, if there's one thing we know about Christian He's got skills. This guy can fight. He can fight everywhere. He's got good ground. He's got good stand-up. Very technically efficient. And I think that the weight cut was affecting. I think it caused him problems in being able to take some blows. And I think being a heavyweight is what he's meant to be. Six foot five. Moral, he is a big man. Trying to drop all that weight was not a good idea. I think he's in the weight class he needs to be. All right, let's go to the numbers for this battle in the heavyweight division. And look, the weight is the highlight because at 237.8, that's a very good weight for Christian Edwards. 240 for Hakeem. You're looking at two guys that are the future when you're talking about the weight of the heavyweights. You don't get the massive guys, it's the hybrids that are always getting the wins now. It's Jackson Wink MMA's Christian Edwards, War Training Center's Rakim Cleveland. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at Pachanga Resort and the Casino, the time has come to conclude our prelims, and we'll do it now with three five-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot three, weighing in 240.4 pounds. The veteran professional brings 22 wins, 15 losses, one draw. He fights out of Dayton, Texas, Rakim the Boogeyman. And across the cage of the adversary, fighting out of the red corner at six foot five, weighing in 237.8 pounds, making the move up from light heavyweight. He brings five professional victories, two defeats, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Christian Payne Edwards. And the referee, Jonathan Romero. So Christian Edwards' heavyweight debut, both of his knockouts have come in the first round, that at light heavyweight. For Rakim Cleveland, his previous 11 victories have come via knockout or submission. Right, John, here we go, round one, are you ready? The first ready? punch that lands Fight. could be the last one that lands as we get things started here. Final preliminary bout at Bellator 293, a night of explosive and fantastic finishes. A great appetizer to what promises to be a terrific main card coming up at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. And Edwards attacking the lead leg of the Southpaw Cleveland. And, you know, these guys had some heat at the weigh-in. They did not like each other. There was some words spoken, and then there was some, uh, some moments where you thought they might swing on each other but Christian Edwards says hey this is my time to show everyone exactly what I can be in the heavyweight division and he's got a big stiff test against Hakeem heavyweights closing the preliminary portion of tonight's card heavyweights will also close the main card, Marcelo Gomes, Daniel James, as Ryan Bader 
Lords over the division. Linda Vassell gets the next shot, but things are cooking at heavyweight, and things are cooking early here in the first round. Christian Edwards is getting going. He oh, is taking moving. shot, though. Cleveland trying to defend it. Gets put on the fence, but attacks the neck of Edwards. He's attacking the neck, but right now he doesn't have a choke really set in. He's not doesn't have his body in the position it needs to be. He's got six submission wins, does Cleveland. He really hasn't tried squeezing right now. He's just kind of holding on there. Neutralizing Edwards. That's exactly what he's doing, neutralizing that takedown attempt. Cleveland wants to keep this on the feet. Of course, Christian Edwards prepared early to Sean Jones, which, of course, you know, you, you want to be the first to win. Here it gets the takedown on Cleveland, but, I mean, that's a lot of pressure on any fighter. Inspired by Anderson Silva, but now continues to work at Jackson Wink, but still gets tips from uh, the UFC heavyweight champion. He's still working at Jackson Wink. He's also gone to Genesis, and he has Jake Ray Ramos, who's in his corner right now, along with Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn. So he's got an outstanding corner behind him. And this is, a, this is where Christian Edwards wanted to bring this fight in the top position he can do a lot of big time elbows and good work he's, like you said working out with john jones he's learned a lot about how to throw those elbows and win he says the pain train is really about to take off so hop on now well he's on top of cleveland here in the first round with the takedown working from the open half guard of cleveland Smothering Cleveland, not really able to throw many strikes because Cleveland doing a good job of trying to neutralize that left arm that Edwards now snakes behind Cleveland. Neck. And John, you hear Edwards' corner get away from the cage. He wants to turn him off of the cage. You saw that Edwards was bringing that foot up, trying to break the half guard of Cleveland. Just a lot of heavy pressure on top of him right now. And he's restricting the breathing. Yep. A lot of people don't like that smother, but it's effective if you just allow it to happen. It will interfere with your breathing. Short elbow from Edwards. And Edwards is right where he wants to be, on the ground, in front of his corner. Having all of his coaches talking to him. And right now, what you're seeing that the half guard of Cleveland right now is just not really that good. It could be that you know, Edwards feels really good, but he could also pass that through. You see, and he's starting to put that hand on that knee to start to bring that leg through and slice it through. Under a minute left in the opening round. 45 seconds to be exact as Cleveland. On his back, wearing the pressure of Christian Edwards, controlling from the top, the half guard. He's in the half guard, he's also in a lockdown now. If you see how his foot is yep. based around, but that's keeping him where he's at also. So now it's not like always say, the best. He can snake his leg through and trying go. to do that right now to full mouth. And it's Cleveland giving up his back. 20 seconds left in the round. Plenty of time still for Edwards to go for the neck. Stead continues to soften up. Cleveland was shot from the back. Ten seconds left in the round. Tried to stick that arm through. Now he's going to the choke. Nope. <laughs> Edwards' first round is a heavyweight in the books, and we'll hear from his celebrated corner. He lost that first round, so you know what he's going to come out and do this next round. He's going to come out and try to be heavy. You're going to see a minute, minute and a half of heaviness, and then he's going to be done, okay? So I want to make sure you're holding that position. You keep control of that space. And if you want that takedown, you can do it. Just make sure you stand it up, okay? Big breath, big breath. barely above the eyelid. You get him down. And fight for that ground and pound. Just fucking take down this shit. Put your fucking hands on him and keep him away. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Keep your distance on. Let's get it. 
Hey, this run, you're gonna win this one. Different forms of communication Just in the respective little. corners. Uh, quickly, uh, unofficial score and why? Oh, easily, that is Christian Edwards round 10-9. Getting close, you know, it could have been getting closer to a 10-8. It wasn't, it's 10-9. Here we go, round two, right? Dominated ready? that round fight. once the fight hit the ground. Bell round number two. Moving out of the South Boss dance. Flat-footed, trying to, already trying to work some of that lactic acid out of his arms as, again, he wore Edwards. Edwards using the right hand, almost setting up a takedown. Then Cleveland fired back inside the low kick to the lead leg of the southpaw by Edwards. That was a nice shot landed by Joaquim Cleveland in there. He got his attention. That's what he needs to do. Let those hands flow. Edwards, just 24 years of age. Cleveland, 33, lot more experience. Body kick, just not. Cleveland, as he backed up. Edwards fainting, trying to open Cleveland up. Cleveland firing a low kick on the inside. There's a front kick, nice counter left that landed for Cleveland. Trying to set his feet down, land clean shots on those counters. He's waiting. Right hand from Edwards, 90 seconds gone here in the second. The offensive output has Low down in terms of the pace. Nice right hand though connects for Edwards, which is to southpaw momentarily before going back to orthodox. This is what happens when you, you, know, you land a couple of shots. Cleveland has gained a lot more respect from Christian Edwards in this round based upon those two landed shots. And so he needs to figure, I need to start upping my output. Go after more. Don't, don't just wait to be the counter striker. Be the aggressor. Lead right, oh, there's an uppercut again, but the right hand landed upstairs for Edwards, but Cleveland went fishing for that left uppercut. Again, the naked shot against the fence by Edwards. Yeah, but, you know, not that bad, not as bad as the last one we went across the cage with it. But and Ed, Cleveland trying to frame. Great that separation, John. Nice use of his head. Christian Edwards putting his head, pushing Cleveland's head over. That's weakening him up a little bit. That allows him to get his underhook. Cleveland really needs to turn out of this. Don't allow Edwards to keep you pinned up against the fence here. Shoulder strike from Cleveland. Another one. Two minutes left in the second. You can see how Raheem Cleveland, look at his legs, are almost right next to each other. Edwards needs to take a look down, and there's an opening for him to shoot on those legs and get his hands clasped. Head battle continues like two rams. Yeah. All legal. Don't strike with it. You can press with it. You can make it uncomfortable. Minute and a half left in the second round. Separation by Cleveland, but now has to fire as it's a lead right down the middle by Edwards. Need to ratchet up the offense here. A minute 13 left in the second. In the second round, Edwards, 7 of 21 in total strikes. Cleveland just 8 of 21. So a lot, not a lot of offense, but posturing, setting, and of course with the heavyweights, all it takes is a shot like that that missed. All it takes is that one swing and the not miss. Both guys getting a little bit tired, but I think, you know, fighting at 237 and a half, you know, you're starting to see Christian Edwards breathe a little bit heavier. It's a lot of weight difference of what he was carrying in the past. Rips that calf kick and gets caught upstairs by Cleveland, but Cleveland staying in front. Nails him with the jab and the counter by Edwards. High kick by Cleveland, blocked by Edwards. There, Edwards timing it. 
Well, that was a nice, nice kick that landed to the body by Cleveland. And Edwards looking to drive him through the fence, has him pinned up against the cage again. As the final six seconds tick away in this second round. Hey, that was another beautifully controlled round. The one thing I don't want to see us do this next round is taper off. I want to make sure that we keep the energy applied, okay? I need you to go back out there and you need to own that center. I trust you, all right, you trust me that this guy is a lot tired than you are. Plain and simple. I want you to go out there and work, okay? You get him on the fence, I want to see more. No, what? Hey, hey, don't worry about it. You open him up too, all right? You just need to concentrate. You got to win this round. This is this is it. Time to blast the body and go back up top, okay? He went south box and he wants to wrestle. It's one and one. You got to win this round. But finish his ass. Third and final round for the final preliminary bout here at Bellator 293 from the Pachanga Summit at Pachanga Resort Casino in Temecula, California. Christian Edwards in his heavyweight debut against Rakim the Boogeyman Cleveland. According to Cleveland's corner, it's even at one. How do you have it on your unofficial scorecard and why? I think they might be right. I think you, know, you got to go back to the shots that Rakeem Cleveland landed where he actually hurt Edwards two times. And those were the best shots of the round. And overall, he landed clean shots throughout it. Nice counter right from Edwards as Cleveland went for the jab. There's a left hand over the top by Edwards fighting out of the southpaw stance. Both of them are. <laughs> Again, level change, but John was not dressed it up as well. It's just a naked shot. It was a naked shot, no doubt about it. Was not clean, but he got him where he wanted him as far as up against the cage. We'll see if he can work his way through it and get take that. And why, again, at this stage, not desperation by any means, but wanting to take it to the ground without setting it up. You know, when you get tired and your arms are heavy and you've taken some shots, it's like, I don't want to take another shot, so let me just change levels and go. I'm going to drive him back. It just starts to happen. Instead of doing it the technical way, you just start raw dogging. The stats indicate that fatigue is definitely becoming a factor for both fighters. Both guys are feeling it. 90 seconds have elapsed. Here in the third round, Edwards 3 of 10 in total strikes. Cleveland 4 of 7. Oh. Only missed by about three feet. <laughs> the intent was there. And it was beautifully intent. That was clean. Three minutes remaining in the third and final round. You saw that faint right there by Christian Edwards. You saw all of the reaction from Cleveland. That tells you if you're Christian, set it up in, throw the faint and then throw. But he's off balance from reacting to that faint. Left uppercut on the inside by Cleveland as they clinch. from Edwards, but there's a right over the top by Cleveland. I like how Cleveland inside, he's digging. He's trying to you know, get those uppercuts and those hooks to land. Edwards with a John Jones attempt at a bleak kick. Jab out of range, kick down low by Cleveland. Just over two minutes left in the fight. Who wants it more? Edwards moving up to the heavyweight division. Cleveland competing in his 38th professional fight. This round remains there for the taking. Nice head kick grazing the jaw of Cleveland. <laughs> this 
round is for either guy yep. to take. No doubt about it. Putting the pressure on Edwards. Cleveland looking for the choke. Again with six submissions. Edwards is the, and it looked like he tapped. Wow. Wow. Yep. No, he tapped. There's wow, no doubt there about it. Wow, there it is. Rakim Cleveland spoils the heavyweight debut of Christian that Edwards. And Edwards gets submitted for the first time in his career. This is what happens in heavyweights. People are strong, and that squeeze. No complaining from Christian Edwards as Rakim Cleveland picks up a huge victory, snapping a two-fight losing streak and picks up his first win inside the Bellator MMA cage as Edwards has a conversation with the referee. We saw the tap. Maybe we did it. And it will go down as a submission win for Rakim the Boogeyman Cleveland. Let's back with it. That's what I did. Let's go. One down. Many more to go. pleading his case with Big John McCarthy, who tonight is in a capacity as a broadcast analyst, but let's take a look again. The right hand of Christian Edwards with Cleveland securing the choke, the crank. There it is. There it is. Now, the referee doesn't see it, but then you will see Cleveland looked to the referee and said, hey, he tapped, and well, to be fair, the referee waited for Cleveland to motion to him that there had been a tap because the referee was out of position. And Edwards continues to plead his case. Make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the 10 finger guillotine brings on the tap. Official time, three minutes, 55 seconds. Round number three by submission. The winner, Rakim, the Boogeyman, Cleveland. Here at Bellator 293 on this night, this Rakim proves he ain't no joke. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. I'm here with your winner, Rakim Cleveland. Rakim, that was a tough fight. You had a hard first round. He had you in some bad positions. You kept fighting your way through it. You came out in the second round, landed some big shots. And in the third round, it looked like you were taking over part of it. And then that guillotine choke, it looked like a tap to me. Did you feel it? Yeah, man, he, uh, he tapped me on my leg. As soon as he tapped on me, I looked at the ref and was like, hey, he's tapping. But I kept on cranking until he told me to stop like he's supposed to do. Uh, I'm a vet in this game. and. If it was easy, everybody would do it like I told you just a while ago. It's my 40th fight tonight as a professional, my 23rd win, and I got like a 90-something percent finishing rate. Um, I want to thank Bellator for giving me the opportunity, and uh, I hope I prove myself good enough to, uh, you know, get another contract and extend my, my opportunities in here, maybe even at the 205 division if, if they'll help me down there. In the heavyweight division, you've been up against only tough people. You had Tyrell Fortune, guys like that. 
when you look at the heavyweights and you just saw it had a performance like that, you can be in here with anyone. Who is it that you would like to take on in this cage next? Man, um, anybody want to offer me. Um, my last two fights, like you said, were both against top 10 guys. And um, I came up on the short end of that. And, and uh, I like to prove myself against somebody else and just work my way up the ladder. Um, so I don't care if it's top 10 or, or somebody that's close to the top 10. Uh, just give me somebody. Uh, I definitely like to get in here, you know, summer, fall, somewhere in there, and, uh, and do this again before the year's over for sure. Sounds good to me. Congratulations on a big win. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Rakim Cleveland. Hey. Rakim, the boogeyman Cleveland. 23 wins, 21 finishes. Picking up his first win under the Bellator banner and speaking of heavyweight finishers. Coming up at the top of the hour, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. Bellator 293 is headlined by a heavyweight showdown between two other proven finishers, Marcelo Gome and Daniel James. Combined 23 finishes out of 24 victories, both riding four fight winning streaks with four finishes. Both undefeated under the Bellator banner. They're putting the capstone on what promises to be an action-packed main card. Again, Bellator 293 coming to you from Pachanga Resort Casino in Temecula, California. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. I'm ready for battle. I'm ready to fight. This is my legacy. This is my right. The Bellator cage has landed. versus James tonight on Showtime. but then really doesn't because he doesn't do the things that, and I can't tell he's a hard worker explosive does everything right it's a good time it is all over his 10th win by submission the winner by submission John Sultan and that was it? expected yep stopped takedown number one now, look how tenacious Salter is being with it. That's what separates great wrestlers from pretty good ones. That second and third effort for the takedown, he's still going for it. Salter, 2007, NAIA National Wrestling Champion. Also, Abu Dhabi representative of the United States. If you're gonna lose to somebody, you know, Sean Jason. Yeah, one uh, jujitsu genius in my opinion. A one hook and turning his back advance. exactly where he doesn't want to be. Any one of them could end the fight now. Salter going hard for the rear naked. Six fight win streak for John Salter. Can he get it? It's, it's all over! Just like that, John Salter! 
soon as another first round finish. As soon as this fight went to the ground, start your stopwatch. Salter, excellent submission game. He just showed it. By way of a rear naked choke, official time, one minute, 55 seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, and Salter. So I'm finishing in the first round. I'm not making mistakes in here, so I think I've set myself up as the number one guy. Strikes landed. Round number one, courtesy of CompuStrike. And a wipeout for John Salter, 45 to two. And look where we are in this fight, right back to the ground. Again, to reiterate, really a subplot. Jacoby said, I'm not going to worry about being taken down. I've got to open up my striking because if Salter takes me down, which he probably will, he can't keep me down, he can't submit me. I'm going to explode back up. 325 to go round two. Jacoby to be effective against an opponent like Salter, he's got to keep it standing. And as he said, I've got to work from the outside. For me, this fight is about control and positioning. Ah, it's getting a little too high in the ride. He wants to stay further down the back of Jacoby, and that's what he does. Not really in a position to land a whole lot of punches from here. Jacoby's looking for a stall that they're going to stand him up. I don't see that happening while Salter has a dominant position. Listen, he's really stalling. Herb Dean knows the difference. Salter showing his wrestling, now showing his jujitsu, gliding over the top of Jacoby. Great point, Jimmy on Herb Dean, because he's very content in the work of John Salter. He knows what's going on. He does. Salter now all over Dustin Jacoby. Once again, both hooks in. Rear naked, he's got that it. He's tight, that's under the chin. Herbdeen taking a really close look, and there's the tap. A cool, calm, efficient victory for John Salter. Any moment in this fight, Salter on top, good hip pressure, dominant position, was able to get the rear naked choke, that arm underneath the chin. Too much pressure for Dustin Jacoby. The winner by submission, John. Salter is circling both to his left and his right. Most lefties, oh, nice shot. What a set up. Beautiful timing off the right hook. Grove trying desperately to defend the takedown. Unfortunately, finds himself on his back, although Grove very capable from his back. And he's around the guard. He immediately is not playing guard with Kendall Grove. I don't know what you can do when somebody's yeah. inside control like that. Exactly. And immediately Salter takes the back of Kendall Grove. This is the guy who, in between fights, took the U.S. Abu Dhabi trials, most prestigious no-key grappling tournament in the world. He's the American rep. That was in between fights. That's how good he is, going hard for the rear naked. That's impressive. Can't see how deep it is from here. Kimmel's not in a good spot there, though. That's for certain. He is not. Now both hooks in. Right there, right there, right there. And he's and it's over. He's John Sutter oh, wins his sixth straight and records his tenth of victory. Submission. Oh, look at the setup here. Fainted the right hook right into the double leg takedown. And the double leg, look at this, right around the guard. Doesn't allow Kendall Grove to use those long legs. He's inside control. And look at this transition. One hook in, and I'll let Meathead take the finish. You know, it was absolutely beautiful. It's a great setup. He was patient. He didn't rush anything. He just wanted to get his hands on him, go ahead and touch him. That's all he needed. As soon as he looked, he got on Kendall's hip. Everything was over from that point on. Salter securing his sixth straight win via first round rear naked choke. The winner by submission, John Salter. Yeah, he's a tough guy. I don't know if you guys know this, but he's pretty long, kind of tough to deal with. But uh, can we stop back to like I'm not the best 185 or in Bellator now? I like how Salter's stalking him. Yep. Right there. Kenny goes to fire knee. Salter sees that timing and, and captures a leg. It's very hard in MMA to finish a single. You will see it. You will see Chris Weidman's do it. You'll see John Hendricks do it. But it's very rare. You kind of got to get to both legs. And I think that that's what Salter's best opportunity is going to be. Bring this left, in, uh, left arm wide like he's uh, looking to do. Get underneath the hips. And now I like that trip. Nice. I like that outside leg trip. Great scramble by Kenny. Great scramble by Salter. Salter needs to keep his hips to him, pop his hips, and start to redirect him towards the mat. Get him off the ground, though. And nice subtle inside trip. Nice easy move for John Salter. 
Very good. Salter reaches between his legs, starts to push that knee down. So many options. Salter looking to take the back, and he gets the hooks in quickly. And he has got that in deep. Went to full mount. Should he turn over? Yes, Salter is deep. He's very deep here. Even if he doesn't come up to the chin, as fresh as he is, he can continue to squeeze. He's going to finish this. He lost the hook, but he's still very deep. He won't need it. He's deep enough right here. He, he can just keep the pressure as long as he doesn't get fatigue of his own arms from That's squeezing. It. John Salter has done it again. He has spoiled another party. Now watch this, Sean. There's actually three steps here. He gets the side control. He takes the, uh, the mount, and then he takes the back because Chitty turned over. Not a terrible strategy. A little risky by Chitty. Not a terrible strategy, but the problem is, is Salter was fresh. He was still dry. There was no slipperiness, and all Salter had to do was hold his position. It was only a matter of time. The winner by submission, John. I got to keep proving myself to get back to that point. And uh, so right now, whoever they put in front of me, but if you go back to Italy, you know, I'll go again. A lot of success with that lead hand. I think Halsey's hurt. I think he's rocked. That's why he went for this opportunity to slow it down. Brandon Halsey's takedowns, 99 times out of 100, are offensive in nature. This was a defensive one. That's why it wasn't successful, wasn't able to set it up. This fight looks like a Saw remake. And when you remember that only one guy's cut, that's a stunning. phenomenal amount of blood. One guy cut. literally was waiting just to double check to make sure Salter wasn't cut. There was so much of Halsey's blood on Nice takedown. Triangle. Trying to pass, he just made it tighter. Duck caps! Brandon Halsey felt the urgency, and it cost him the fight. Look here, though. Take down and watch the triangle. Wrist control, steps over it, beautiful triangle, locks it up, and watch Halsey try to pass to his right side. That just made the triangle tighter. Couldn't get it. Look at it here. As soon as Halsey puts pressure on that side, you can't get your opponent to break his legs. The winner by submission, John Salter. Yeah, I hope we put on a good show. Strong guy. I knew I had to come out hard. Couldn't wait on him to start trying to impose his will. Marcelo Golm, he feels that he has never been more prepared mentally and physically. Daniel James putting the heavyweight division on notice. Oh, he's a, that was a big shot. Daniel James, the American Predator. You cannot have this guy hitting you like that. Hitting him harder than frozen foods. Marcelo Gold getting it done violently. Heavyweights out there. I'm telling you right now, Daniel James is here and Bellator. Y'all better watch out. This is what I did exactly what he was supposed to do. I'm number five. Let's go! Marcelo Gold getting it done. A memorable return to Bellator. Here we go. That's what we're looking yep. for. Liam McCourt looking for the first round finish. Surely they both know it's all on the line here. And he'll hook up through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to finish this. He lost a hook, but he's still very deep. Yeah, all that sweat, it's not going to be an easy thing for him. At times, looking like he's looking over submission, but then really doesn't. Because he doesn't do the things that, and I can't tell. He's a hard worker, explosive, does everything right. It's a good time. It is all over! His 10th win by submission. The winner by submission, John Sultan! And that was expected. Yep, stopped. Takedown number one.
to look how tenacious Salter is being with it. That's what separates great wrestlers from pretty good ones. That second and third effort for the takedown, he's still going for it. Salter, 2007, NAIA National Wrestling Champion. Also, Abu Dhabi representative of the United States. If you're gonna lose to somebody, you know, Sean Jason. Yeah, one uh, jujitsu genius in my opinion. A one hook and turning his back advance. exactly where he doesn't want to be. If any one of them could end the fight. Now, Salter going hard for the rear naked. Six fight win streak for John Salter. Can he get it? It's, it's all over! Just like that, John Salter. Soon Another as, first round finish. As soon as this fight went to the ground, start your stopwatch. Salter, excellent submission game. He just showed it. By way of a rear naked choke, official time, one minute, 55 seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, and Salter. So I'm finishing in the first round. I'm not making mistakes in here, so I think I've set myself up as the number one guy. Strikes landed. Round number one, courtesy of CompuStrike. And a wipeout for John Salter, 45 to two. And look where we are in this fight, right back to the ground. Again, to reiterate, really a subplot. Jacoby said, I'm not going to worry about being taken down. I've got to open up my striking because if Salter takes me down, which he probably will, he can't keep me down, he can't submit me. I'm going to explode back up. 325 to go round two. Jacoby to be effective against an opponent like Salter, he's got to keep it standing. And as he said, I've got to work from the outside. For me, this fight is about control and positioning. Ah, it's getting a little too high in the ride. He wants to stay further down the back of Jacoby, and that's what he does. Not really in a position to land a whole lot of punches from here. Jacoby's looking for a stall that they're going to stand him up. I don't see that happening while Salter has a dominant position. Listen, he's really stalling. Herb Dean knows the difference. Salter showing his wrestling, now showing his jujitsu, gliding over the top of Jacoby. Great point, Jimmy, on Herb Dean, because he's very content in the work of John Salter. He knows what's going on. He does. Salter now all over Dustin Jacoby. Once again, both hooks in. Rear naked, he's got that it. He's tight, that's under the chin. Herbdeen taking a really close look, and there's the tap. A cool, calm, efficient victory for John Salter. Any moment in this fight, Salter on top, good hip pressure, dominant position, was able to get the rear naked choke, that arm underneath the chin. Too much pressure for Dustin Jacoby. The winner by submission, John. Salter is circling both to his left and his right. Most lefties, oh, nice shot. What a set up. Beautiful timing off the right hook. Grove trying desperately to defend the takedown. Unfortunately, finds himself on his back, although Grove very capable from his back. And he's around the guard. He immediately is not playing guard with Kendall Grove. I don't know what you can do when somebody's yeah. inside control like that. Exactly. And immediately Salter takes the back of Kendall Grove. This is the guy who, in between fights, took the U.S. Abu Dhabi trials, most prestigious no-gi grappling tournament in the world. He's the American rep. That was in between fights. That's how good he is, going hard for the rear naked. That's impressive. Can't see how deep it is from here. 